biggest strength of my team would be communication and teamwork. Uh, when all of us are working together and talking to each other, we can usually accomplish anything, we can get anything done. That's definitely our biggest strength. I would say the biggest strength of our team is probably just our, our teamwork. I think we have really good team play off each other. I think we have individually skilled players. I think our biggest the strength uh, is probably aces because the guy is nuts, but also, also the team play. I think we have a really good team play. The preparation for the major was fine. Our practice before the major, we practiced against uh, European teams. We practiced against uh, American team too, so I think we are prepared. For group stage, we just refined all of our strats and we came up with some new stuff specifically for some opponents just in case we play them. So we feel very confident going into the group stage. Coming into the group stage, we have what most people have considered the group of death. It's ourselves, NIP, the former Looking For organization, now Giants team, and then uh, Space Station Gaming. EG and NIP both look really strong at the moment in Pro League. I think EG is a great team. Our style can fit their play style, so I think we are prepared for them. I don't really think I need to say anything to our opponents in our group. Uh, we're just going to let our actions speak for themselves and show up on game day. To the rest of our group, I just want to say keep sleeping on us and uh, you guys will see what will happen. There is a thing I would like to say to SSG, is like, we're going to send you on, the, on your space station again. Let's do it. God, I love Rise. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the strength of all of those teams is their teamwork. Hey, you got to be a good team to be on top. Yeah. You can't just have individual players. So I mean, yeah, it's a good message for the, for the kids out there, right? Work as a team if you want to get here and live the dream. Well, let's take a look at the roster starting off with SSG again playing on home soil. It's Thinking Nade, Rampy, Bosco, Fultz, and Charla. Fultz, obviously the newcomer coming in. Much lower numbers in terms of the recorded stats, although not that much lower. At least he's had the first half of the Pro League season to be able to kind of get there. And I think he has. He's really kind of gotten to a good place. Bosco's actually the one that's been struggling a little bit more unexpectedly, I think, in that uh, he's definitely a very strong player. But stats-wise, Thinking Nade has really been showing up as of late. And I think that's stolen a little bit of thunder from some of the other players. But these guys definitely show up at LAN events, as, as we've seen. And I think Sometimes uh, their pro league performance doesn't always highlight how good they are, but Vodafone Giants, these guys are beasts right now. Giants, I think, is a good description. Absolutely. Corey Hicks, Alfama Rise, and Aces, the team formerly known as Looking for Org, formerly known as The Stream, formerly known as Millennium. It goes back <laughs> quite a long way. It actually goes all the way back to winning season two of pro league. It does. You want to go back that far to Yunkus. 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 Yep, all the way back. So another one of those teams like Rogue that's been around yep. forever but not a lot of original members left on the team. No, no, and that's who beat Rogue, of course. Yeah. So yeah, definitely a lot of uh, OGs, although a lot of these players weren't necessarily on that team at the time. Let's see where they're actually gonna be playing the Consulate, the first to go, and then Villa. All right, leave some good maps available. Border, definitely a good one for SSG. Not a lot of actually play on that from uh, Buffon Giants, but Coastline, both these teams have played quite a bit of, have some good score lines on. We're going to lose Bank and Cafe, so oh. that will leave us with Clubhouse as a decider. All That's right. Interesting. Honestly, right off the gate, I'm thinking this is going three. I think it's very likely. Between these two teams especially, I think unless one of these teams has a bad, bad day today or one of them has a really especially good day, I think they're pretty evenly matched. I think it's very likely to go to three. Although that's usually when it goes to two, right, is when you think it should go to three. So you never know. But day one tends to be the day that gets the most two ones. Same with day two. It tends to go down towards two O's the further into the tournament you get. So, And with you casting, of course, it means it's three maps. So Always. we'll have that. So just well, whoever wins the first map, just assume they won't win the second. Yeah, Stuart, uh, one of our bosses from Ubisoft, uh, also decided to tweet out that the curse still lingers for me. It sure does. And uh, I might want to look for another... Casting partner. <laughs> I want shorter days. But we certainly do get at least long, interesting ones. Yep. This this should be no exception for sure. I definitely think both these teams have a lot to uh, to prove, a lot to show, especially getting a new org. Like you said, that can kind of make them nervous a little bit and that they have a lot to prove to their new org. Because i got to imagine, with as good as they were playing, they probably had some pretty high offers, although I heard they also had some pretty lowball ones. Mm -hmm. I got to imagine Vodafone Giants, being uh, less of a well-known org, must have had a pretty good offer to get to, to pick up this team. So, you know, they're expecting a lot out of this team. 
Well, I'm sure as you guys could probably pick up through our microphones, the screaming in the background, and IP and EG continues on into overtime. Yeah, they are definitely not wanting to be out of this yet, so it's it's definitely going to be a, a good match between this two. Obviously, we're going to get Kraken here on this one soon, so hopefully it'll be timed perfectly so that one ends that map soon, just just in time to get this one Kraken. But yeah. either way, of course, use that multi-twitch so you can watch both at the same time so you don't miss any action and then don't have to go back and watch VODs. Exactly. You know, my big question is, why aren't we squad streaming? Squad streaming? Why aren't we squad streaming between Rainbow Six and Rainbow Six Bravo? Huh? Yeah. Who's making that squad decision? Up. I need to contact them. Some squad streaming. <laughs> Tweet going. at them. Yep. Well, either way, though, this is uh, this is going to be good. I, I, gotta, I expect a lot out of the Vodafone Giants, who have, have just been phenomenal online this season. But they've also struggled a lot at LAN, and I, th I, I hope this is the time when they'll finally break the curse. We will get started here on Border. So it should be good between these two here. Now, uh, Border, SSG played once during uh, Pro League, in the actual Pro League matches against the Sonics. That was a 7-3 for them. The Vodafone Giants do not have any play on it during Pro League. However, both these teams played a lot of other lands and qualifiers and things like that. So there may have been some play during that. Thermite ban. Always a fun one on Border because he is useful on every single bomb site. Absolutely. We've also seen uh, a couple Thermite bans in the past, actually digging back uh, to more than a year ago when the map or the Operator bans first came out. Yeah, that it, was... Actually, it was Vodafone Giants who went with the uh, the No Hard Breacher Hicks uh, Fuse Shield. That was fun. Yeah, those were some good days. That was refreshing. Well, well either way, though, no, no Mike getting banned is not a huge surprise here. Mirror getting banned also not a huge surprise. So those are pretty predictable bans for this particular map. Ooh, that, that's a spicy one, though. No Thermite, but no Bandit, either. Kaed, obviously, going to get in play. Also, Mute. Should, either of those should be pretty useful here. I wonder if uh, they're planning to play a different site than Armory. Now, Vodafone Giants are one of the teams who will play Bathroom Tellers, so maybe that's what they have in mind here, is to be able to play that. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's nice to be able to secure the wall, but, you know. Either way, they will be going, actually, to Armory Lockers Archives first. Capitao is in play, though. Now, will Fult sixth pick over to that? as he teased a second ago, because Capitao is very strong, and I expected we were going to see it banned pretty often so far. We did see it banned earlier, but it's not banned on this map, so that should be pretty useful. There we go. That's going to be half wall just burned out. It's going to be half wall barbecue, basically, if you try and hide behind that. Because he can just even, you know, just this tiny little hole is all it takes to be able to get that all the way across there and to burn them, and they could even, he can hit it, hit it from below even, potentially shoot it up to the ceiling and it'll drop down. Plenty of ways to burn them out, also to be able to deny what would be abandoned if he wasn't banned, but the Mute is going to take his place in, in terms of holding the wall, if they even want to bother. They might just say, forget it. We've seen some teams go with the soft wall, which it looks like they could even be doing. There's some of the wall opened up already. So that should be interesting, but that gives Cap Tao a good opportunity to land a uh, bolt through that. Because he could even open up just a single bullet hole with his pistol and fire the uh, crossbow through that, leaving himself a little more protected, even though it's a soft wall. Yeah, it's still very early on. Obviously, we're still in prep phase of round number one. However, yeah. I am surprised with a Thermite ban that Giants are uh, angling to stretch out a little bit more. You know, you have a lot of freedom to bunker up a little bit because they just don't have the ability to open up a whole lot of surface area. Oh, Corey, getting brave. On the armory wall. Almost gets punched through the window, too. You heard the shots ringing out. But yeah, that was that was a bit risky. But, you know, Corey does make a lot of the risky plays for the team. That is somewhat his role, it seems. He's just kind of attempting to be the playmaker a lot of time, although Ace is, tends to be the big playmaker for the team. I see Corey fashioning himself a bunch of kill holes down and towards his detention, waiting for entry in as the wall's been opened up as well into de detention from the outside. For Space Station Gaming here, not a clear directive. It looks like they're going to be angling for a CC take over towards the armory wall. He's got Fultz and Rampy, both repelling out on the west side. Corey has taken a lot of damage, though. It could be pretty easy to finish him off. Could he, Cap Tau Bolt could even do the job. But he's got help from Aces providing crossfire. All well, the shots coming out. Just a tiny nick from one of those would also be enough to kill him. So they do know he's there. They do know he's playing that. They just can't seem to find enough for a shot. In fact, even a Zofia grenade would be enough to, to finish him off at this point. There's the Firebolt. Unfortunately, a missed shot. Gets Corey from... No, there we go. Corey Barbecue. Now, only one left for the half wall. You can see Aces was de deliberating going for the rotate in through Fountain all the way back in behind the cubby, but he'll think better yeah. of that and back off and just leave a trail of goo mines in his wake. So this is CCTV control now established for Space Station Gaming about halfway through the round. They've killed off the Jaeger. They've basically taken zero casualties or damage in the process. 
It's also a lot of utility now lost in behind the monitors with two ADSs. And well. hey, all he had to use was a firebolt. Yeah. And it worked out pretty well for you now. Coming now, down to the site execute. Now's the hard part, yeah, because you saw those mozzie pests as well are also denying quite a bit of droning combined with the mute jammers. So it's going to be definitely harder from here to get some intel, especially with 90 being watched here by Alfama. He's got a little bit of an angle in through the rotate hole. They're, they're trying to put some flank pressure on, and they're really kind of struggling with that at the moment, it seems. And that's getting slowed down, but at least mozzie getting tracked by Jackal is going to help in terms of uh, catching his position, because that's a C4 you want to watch out for. No one going to play behind half wall because of the cap tower there. That makes this take a lot easier, but they've got to get past Hicks first. Bosco out on the sandwich repel now, dealing a lot of damage to Hicks, the mozzie that was previously being tracked by Bosco. Now have to fall back. Chaw's going for a plant inside the door. Nitrocell will not connect either against the soft walls. He's too far back. But maneuvering in behind half wall now is Alfami. He doesn't know the plant's going down now. That'll be completed. Chaw gunned down as he tries to retreat back to CCTV. So man advantage for the Giants, but they're on a post plant scenario as they have to retake back towards the armory wall. It's been blown wide open after leaving it soft in their own defense. Repels coming out now, heading all the way to the roof. Maybe upside down repels to cover the diffuser at extreme range and extreme safety. Ace is trying to battle his way back up, but Hicks has been downed off screen uh, behind the bomb. Alfama with one, immediately traded by Fultz, so a technical 2v2 now. Fultz in behind the monitors, and you still have coverage from Rampy. Fultz continues to gun everyone down with the Paris with the 1vx now, as Aces will fall. And beautiful wrap up there for Space Station wow. Gaming. Get the plant down, they play the post plant beautifully, even at a disadvantage. They had all the safety they needed from inside of CC and on the West Repel. Here's what I liked about that round from SSG. First, the take of CCTV. As you said, barely taking any damage, clearing out utility, getting the kill on Corey, pushing aces out. But the, the way they also set up the post plant, you see teams often will scramble and spread uh, all their people around the plant to try and cover it, and then are scrambling out to go for the post plant. In that situation, they had so much coverage from the smokes from the Jackal, uh, which who, who was playing a great sandwich there with uh, Bosco, getting a smoke in through the sandwich window as well. But then the Capital with the Firebolt to cut off rotation. But they set that up at a distance. So Chala, as soon as that plant's done, doesn't matter if Chala dies. He's running out. He's a bonus at that point to keep left alive. Fultz is already in position. The rest of the team, Bosco's in position. Everyone's ready to cover post plant. That's why it works so well, because they're already just ready for it. So once the smoke clears, plant's down, and now it's space station in control. They did lose a few too many people on that defense, but Fultz, I mean, 4K for him just slaughtering them from that one position. That's why you banned capped out. Just a beautiful read from Space Station and an pick as well. You can see Fultz was teasing the IQ in the first round and then he over to the Capitao, seeing that yeah. the Maestro came out. As soon as Corey sticks the Echo, it's back over to the IQ and he's holding it. So, again, a sixth sense there for Space Station or incredible homework being done. Yeah. Sean and Sam just singing for the heavens right now Hurts. in the background. Yeah. Let me turn on this monitor and see what's going on. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> tap into that. We need the, the picture in picture. Yeah. Kind of see, right? That's what the multi-twitch is for, right? So. But this round getting underway here. Oh, looks like... Uh, G1. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry, spoiler You're not going to do the, uh, the Stokes's, turn your turn your headset off right now. No. No, it's uh, it's definitely it was a good one for EG. It was a good match. I recommend watching the Vaz if you missed it. Uh, it was a very good match. We were watching it during the uh, the previous match as well. Uh, trying to watch both games at the same time, always, always fun. But already setting up again for an attack here onto Armory. Lockers yet again. In this case, they decided not to just switch bomb sites. They're just going to go for it. But this time, they give up CCTV easily rather than putting a lot of manpower in there, trying to defend it. They're going for a very different defensive strategy this time. And uh, so far, they haven't lost anyone, but and it's only a minute in and full CCTV control over to SSG as well, starting to open up the wall. It's not looking too bad, although it looks like, no, they can't really do anything about the wall. Oh, they do. They, they kite trick it. Well done, that's all three X Kairos, I think. Yep. Taken out. Well done, that's the only hard breacher they had, so. And that's kind of what I was saying in the entry, or the beginning of the last round, which is you take the Thermite off the board, you have the ability to really peel back and play much more reserved. The stretch into CCTV, while well, yeah. a valiant attempt, didn't really accomplish so much, so. Now, Ori falling back, playing the Echo now, and the Kai trick onto the wall. I mean, this is a beautiful setup and a beautiful I, response. For I gotta blame Thinking Nade, though. That, he's the Thatcher. It was his responsibility to make sure that that didn't just happen, because it takes time for the Kai Electrica to charge up. In that meantime, it can be Thatcher. You, you had the timing. He took a while to set up his X Kairos. That was definitely a, a mistake on Thinking Nate's part. And if they lose this round, I'm going to hang that on his head. 
So Space Station now have to regroup and reposition. They're going for an office take now as they know they have no possibility of making it in through the armory wall. Just full sending in through the armory door also seems like a no-go on the side of Space Station. So they reposition and they've only got 50 seconds to do so. You gotta plan down. 5v5 right now, this is... <laughs> you can't have a more yeah. favorable situation. They can't open the up the office wall either. They've got to come in potentially through the archives door, which has some nice long angles they can use to fight him. This is this is not looking favorable, especially with the ACOGs that you have in play here. This is looking... Oh, there we go. Nice pick from Rampy, though. He didn't even get to see him picking it from a different angle. But smokes are coming out. Plant could come out here in the next 20 seconds. Wait, Nunchala to get in through the Archives balcony door. The Toxic Babes will come out in return, try and dissipate into the smoke. is getting the plant down momentarily. He has to pull off. He's taking a lot of damage, a trade now between SSG and the Giants. And Corey has also been downed off screen. He'll be picked up now, just above the Teller's Hatch. So everyone for the Giants have to retreat back towards Archives, try and collapse upon this plant attempt. Rushing into the top of metal now is Thinking Nade and repelling in. There's no time remaining. And Chal has been downed. Rampy has the Diffuser in his hands on one HP, putting the plant down into the overtime at the Archives window. Oh, Oh, two huge kills there for the Giants. The plant's still going down, though, and no, Corey will stop it in the nick of time. The Giants hang on there by their shoestrings, but they do pull it out in the end. We're going to be heading downstairs now on a defense, and that one came a lot closer, and like you said, it all comes down to the Thatcher and the Kaid on that yep. one. Sorry, thinking. You definitely weren't thinking on that one. Unfortunate, but either way, it did come pretty close. As you said, that was surprisingly close for what a huge disadvantage SSG were at. Nonetheless, though, they definitely showed some potential to fight angles and be able to play at least a little bit, despite uh, Vodafone Giants being able to anticipate wherever they were going to come from at that point. There was very little they could do that would surprise them. Plus, the, uh, the IQ was dead, so the Echo had a bit of an advantage there. But nonetheless, Fultz is going to switch off that IQ again to the Capital. Uh, he can't. Oh, uh, you might have been tweaking his weapon loadout. I'm assuming that's why he kept kind of tweaking off it. But they are going to go down to Vents now that they finally won Armory Lockers which of course is a typical secondary, but I do expect we might see bathroom tellers from Vodafone Giants as they tend to play that over customs. It's a, it's a French site, even though they're not an all French team anymore, I'm still considering it a French site just because between them and Vitality tend to be the two teams that play it the most and the ones that kind of pioneered that defense. We are gonna see uh, some site change-ups on who's playing what. We'll have Corey on the Legion this time and uh, just a few other random changes in terms of who's going to be playing what. They have Alfama with uh, the black, or the, uh, no, sorry, the black guys being set up in a few different locations to try and better anticipate where the attack's going to come from this time, especially since you're going to have people upstairs. That leaves the opportunity for the people downstairs to be watching those cameras to help cover their flanks. Of course, the outside cams help as well if they're going to go for any runouts, which they potentially could, as you're likely to have people playing over on that side of the building on some kind of repel uh, or even pushing into the window. One camera left to set up as well. Let's see if he can pull it off. C could we see run? I thought maybe he was going to go for a run out over there. <laughs> he was going to pull the C4. <laughs> could you imagine a valley run out at this level play? It would Ooh, I like be that. Interesting. Yeah, this is the uh, the carousel of operators right now for Corey. Yeah, I mean he's a pretty flex uh, player for them though, so it doesn't surprise me. Especially when you've got aces on the dedicated frag and roll. Yeah. So you had Corey on Jaeger on round one, and then he drops back to an Echo, so you're going from Rome to Anchor, and now yeah. Flex on the Legion. So. He's a pretty strong fragger as well, although I think aces and rise tend to bubble up to the top the most, but I think Corey has definitely a, a, been a reliable pickup for this team. So it looks like SSG mounting for an office side clear over, trying to push out uh, aces and Corey out of the top floor hold. Push them back downstairs, grab your top control, and move in. Without a Thermite, um, bathroom wall might be a no-go here if it's fully reinforced. If it's got a rotate in it, which we didn't quite catch yeah. earlier on, we'll have to uh, have to see how that develops. But Jackal Tracks will be coming out. <laughs> Actually, that free fire there from Corey almost oh, collects yeah. a free kill through the wall and the door. Debating sending out some more, uh, some more soup cans and some impact <laughs> grenades. Here, he's trying to feed the poor as they come in. Holtz to start things off on to Corey as he tries to retreat, and that's just from AC balcony, so. He's been rocking that para. Volts has been on one early, and that's a that's a difference maker right there for Space Station is going to be false. It's Fultz. How yeah. well he can play in these games will most likely dictate how well Space Station do. They're a very equal or very even team across the board, but yeah. Fultz has his sporadic moments where things get a little out of control. <laughs> if he can play more reserved and play with the rest of the team, yeah. SSG is a strong contender to make it out of this group. Especially with Capital being such a strong operator, it's all the more important that he do his job well because it could be a real game changer, as we've seen. I mean, just ask Corey from the first round. 
Bosco, though, doing his buck work from above with the ITA. Corey is down in the meantime. And uh, looking pretty good for SSG, except for on time. Now, of course, they have top floor control, which is essential, but you have to get downstairs, and that's where they're starting to move down there. You see the Thatcher thinking aid trying to work his way down, clearing out goo mines with those uh, the EMPs. Bosco doing some work from above as well. And plant actually going down. Yeah, Charlie going to try and put the plant down inside of ventilation. No one contesting right now. His ace is him behind the server rack. He's got no idea. Plant's going down as he's being jackal tracked amidst the hailstorm of bullets from up above through the floorboards that were blown open. And now Alfama inching his way closer to the diffuser. Rise in the midst of an engagement inside a supply room deep downtown, 26 meters away and closing, as we can see from the pings coming out. But Alfama counter diffusing right now. No one's stopping him. The flashbangs right in, but on the vault. It's a flawless round from SSG. <laughs> Not the most uh, typical style of a flawless round. Usually there's no plant involved in one of those, but hey, we take those. Yeah, given given the first round and this round, and even the, the second round had Thinking Nade been able to do his job in denying the, uh, the Electro Claw, I'm feeling SSG's attacks right now. I feel like this could have easily been a 3-0 so far. Yeah. Had they timed that first round a little bit better because they even got really close without that. I, I don't know. Their attacks definitely are looking strong. Obviously, once they switch sides, we'll see how things shake up a little bit. But it's been it's been very well coordinated, I would say. All those teams, as we said, kind of joked about earlier, talking about their teamwork. We're seeing that from SSG right now, definitely. And whereas Vodafone Giants, we're seeming like we're seeing a lot of the players get kind of caught solo, especially players like Corey, who are normally kind of a solo player, anyways. They're just getting caught off guard. They're not really seeming to trade a lot of these kills out back on SSG. Man, I feel for the Giants right now, they cannot catch a break. So, wow. first round, Fultz flashes the IQ. <laughs> they take a Maestro. Yeah. Second, in, in the first round, Fultz six picks to Capita. Second round, Fultz sticks the IQ. They bring an Echo. Third round, he six picks off of IQ to the Capital and they don't have the Echo anymore. And now fourth round, he keeps it, and Corey six picks into an Echo. They, the mind can't games. Can't catch a break, man. Fultz, Fultz is just, just playing full psychic right now. It's using insane. the six picks, man. That's, I love when the six picks really are actually impactful like that. And the, the counterplay between those two. Now, obviously, IQ has other uses besides spotting yokais. And thankfully, the yokais are not as invisible right now. They're back to kind of their normal state of near invisibility rather than full invisibility. So they are still difficult to spot not impossible, but IQ makes it so much better, especially when you're going to go for an execute push and you can spot where it's at before you go into the room. Definitely essential. Of course, you also have thinking aid on the Thatcher who can potentially disable the yokais before going to the room if you can't get an angle on them. One of the biggest difficulties that the Giants have been having in the last three rounds is knowing when a plant is going off. Their intel inside yeah. the objective has been remarkably lackluster. Well, last time Aces, too, was also getting jackal tracked, and I think he was way more concerned about getting pushed than he was about stopping the diffuse from being planted. And that was that was definitely just good timing by SSG, but you're right, their, their lack of awareness. They have uh, the, the cameras from the uh, Evil Eyes, but I think uh, they could be running Maestro a little bit more often and getting more intel from that. They do have at least the, the Yokai's. If those are better placed, they could be calling those out better and knowing when those plants are going down. Because like you said, that's seeming a weakness and we're seeing SSG get plants down far more often than they should be allowed to. Ooh, that's a Yokai identified by faults mm. inside of office. Creepy. Right beside trip walling. Yeah, he's looking for it. It's through two soft walls, so the bullets, you know, it's gonna yeah. take a few shots to get all the way through. Tricky. But. As soon as, I mean, there's no one else in office. That's just a free echo drone as soon as they jump in through radio window. And you got a couple of nitro cells roaming downstairs right now. Alfama has made his way back to the bathroom and Rise is going to collapse back towards the site. And that sounds like a nitro cell just went off and <laughs> absolutely did not connect. That'll force Aces out as well as the Xkyros will detonate onto his archives wall. And yeah, that's Alfama's nitro cell. I think he was trying to grab someone in office, maybe behind radio desk, but unfortunately yeah. it just. Uh, didn't pan out for him, yeah, right well, behind Radio Desk. Upside is, so far they've managed to burn two minutes, they didn't lose a single player, and they've done a little bit of damage to Chala. So this is not the worst position for the Giants to be in. They did lose top floor control, though, without trading anyone to SSG, so that's not great. Obviously, the Jackal Tracks as well will make this top floor control a little bit better, because they can put some pressure downwards onto that Jaeger, who's Aces, one of the top fraggers on the team. Pre-play C4 there is certainly not going to help at the moment, but they're hoping once there's people trying to guard that hatch towards late round, especially if there's a, an attempt to kind of plant from there, that will be helpful. But, oh, fortunately, there goes another camera lost, and that could be the one that would have caught them planting, potentially, if they go for a plant in there again. But Corey takes down Rampy, and finally, some blood is spilled. It's like Rampy was trying to collect the... 
a seemingly free kill as Corey's isolated inside a supply room on the Echo being jackal tracked but he's two for two now. Finally thinking Nate will put an end to his reign of terror. Now rotating in towards the main office hatch, falls right beside that nitro cell that was free place and Rise won't be able to get it off as he's downed behind the desk inside of Workshop. Now vaulting straight through in the pre-fire SSG, or sorry, he's thinking they carrying the diffuser, but it's a clean sweep for the Giants, three in a row. And that's Space Station dropping round number four. So we're going back and forth here. The Giants lose their first attempt at the site. They make a few alterations, they come back and win. This is what we would expect, the back and forth between these two teams, just because they're fairly evenly balanced. But that was definitely Corey's round to shine. Although he was on the Echo, why he was playing so aggressive, I don't know. But you know what? It was fine because it worked. He did get traded after those two, but that was enough to soften things up. And then you saw the time. Time is really what cost him. I talked about how that first few minutes, uh, the first two minutes specifically, got burned without losing anyone. That really paid off in the end because you saw the desperation of thinking Nate jumping in for the plant in the B site. Just not enough coverage or enough manpower or time left to get into good positions to do that. Had to go for the desperate play. He gets downed. Then there was no way they were saving that round. Even if the frags hadn't got down, no one would have been able to rotate in time to catch the diffuser and plant it. So definitely a good round. We'll see similar uh, lineup coming out again this round. And of course, they've got the uh, Kayed again. So hopefully... They're a little bit better this time, but guess what? They didn't bring the Thatcher now. So, uh, I'm not sure if they are adequately prepared for this, or if you know what, they're just going to go for an office stake, maybe. But still, no Thatcher. Not great when you know that they play that Kaed. I mean, you could try and cut him off uh, from the sandwich window if you know he hasn't like rotated over that side yet, but... Uh, it's tricky, man. I, I feel like it's definitely going to be difficult. Corey putting one of his drones there inside break room. Nice spot there. That's going to be very useful because they're letting them take CCTV again. You want to get some intel, though, on whether or not they're going to push into the hallway, whether or not you can maybe even pre-fire through the wall through metal detector into the soft wall of CCTV. Might even be able to get a pick if the, the yokai spots someone there. So Space Station clearly valuing the, uh, the IQ. They're going to sacrifice the Thatcher for it, like you said. And yeah. Sticking with the Capita, I think that makes a lot of sense for Fultz. Well, before it was Fultz going between those two, yep. right? So they just decided, well, let's take both. Exactly. And Fultz has been gunning with the Para so far. So don't take him off an operator yeah. that he's having a lot of success with early on. Absolutely. Let him run that momentum all the way until it, Oh, uh, no. And then, is that an Echo drone? That, that was the one in break echo. room. Yep. Did he get it? I don't think he knows if he got it. I mean, if he goes back on the scanner, we'll oh, do there it. We go. Yeah, there it's done, though. All right, well. Corey, unfortunately. Maybe that's why Corey was trying to frag out last round, too, is he maybe lost both of his yokais early already. Those are definitely going to be uh, taken down. It's just going to be the hard part is going to be opening this wall now. Mm -hmm. That's where they're really going to have the difficulty. Is soft as well uh, on the other side. You saw the bottom of the wall partially open. Should be interesting. They're going to take advantage of that, of course, to start to open up the wall. Now they can use that, of course, to hit the half wall with a firebolt if they want to. But no one playing behind that at the moment. They're going to drone just oh. to see what they have to deal with on the other side. That's super awkward. The impact only got the first side of the soft wall. Yeah. It hit and then didn't break the other side of it. So they're trying to shoot it open now. And awkward. A lot going back and forth right now. Not yeah. a lot connecting. This is a long angle here from Fultz as well, all the way into small office. Where he wishes he had the LMG, right? Yeah. Definitely doing some good job suppressing them, but so far, not any kills done. Fultz takes a bit of damage as well for his trouble. They need to just get some momentum going here. You see some of the players playing from below now, thinking they're trying to get some intel on where that electric claw is to take it out. This is smart. This is a good strat. Now that will offer them the ability to open up the wall without the Thatcher, so good teamwork. Maybe they made it work after all, thinking they did his job with just a different hop. Works out at the end of the day, as long as it gets the job done. Yeah. Really matter. Ooh, a lot of shots just missing picks there. Bosco repelled on the sandwich window. He immediately gets off. I think he's wary of a run out here. Yeah. Rampy will shut it down, though, as Aces is trying to flank down through the main hallway coming out of the office. Double door. Rampy not taking any of that. He's actually already made a workshop, but there's Rise and Alfama. It's a volley now from the Giants, but Chala will answer back with one of his own. Creeping up metal stairs now is Bosco. He's got the track onto Rise. He's going for a run out outside. You don't need the Jackal track for that one, but oh, thinking Nade will boy. still fall. Trying to collapse up onto him, and that will be Bosco eliminating Rise from play inside of CC. 10 seconds left. Last we saw, Corey had a yokai up. 
completely stop the plant. Charlotte trying to plant inside the smoke, but here comes the Toxic Babe. Now that'll be choking off Charlotte. He can't stick that and has to relocate behind the half wall. He'll be planting into the overtime now, and Hicks rushing through the gas. Oh, Bosco with a great cover. All he needs to do is hit the second one now. The hip fire. Corey has no idea where he is. It's out of the closet. Oh, Corey on the 180. And the Giants will take their first lead of the day. One bullet left in that MP5. And then 17 in the very ninth. Definitely a desperate situation there for Corey. Just almost a blunder. He saw the first push in attempt. Dies to the cover. Thinking he could push through the smoke. I mean, I like the idea. Throws the one smoke. He knows he has to ro rotate to the corner. Is waiting till the, the plant is further down. Starts running through the smoke thinking, I know exactly where he's at. Great idea. And then gets cut down. But uh, great recovery by Corey there. That's a couple rounds now he's helped save. So, I don't know. How, I don't even know if I want to say this. I don't oh, know if I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. You definitely have to say this. <laughs> so Corey's got the uh, the size matters charm on. Uh huh. It takes a big banana to make a play like that. I'm just going <laughs> to say that. Oh boy, there's a banana charm as well. Big banana plays. Well, that's what it was. It's the banana with the measurement on it. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. One, yeah. I thought you meant the one that was just the banana. Ah <sighs> no. Well. They we are going to go custom drive the bathroom tellers after all and still bring in a castle. So interesting that they didn't go with the bathroom tellers play that I was talking about. Maybe trying to change things up a little bit because that was too predictable. Corey up there with six doing some work along with Fultz and Rampy as well on SSG. Chala, while he doesn't have a ton of kills, he's been getting the, helping get those plants down. Definitely been effective at doing that. As well as he helped get the wall open last time. So definitely not all about the kills for him. But it, that's how it is with Chala. He's a very uh, Goga-like player, and a lot of times, you know, sometimes he'll go off and clutch and things like that, but a lot of times he's there to really just help get the utility going, get the plant down. Definitely been doing that. But right now, it is advantage to Vodafone Giants by one point here. I can see this easily going 3-3 three, three into the half, though. Don't oh. worry. He's all high off that last round, and unfortunately just could not find the shots in time. Sorry, but you don't have an ACOG on Jaeger, so... Not gonna happen. I mean, someone on Space Station read that beautifully. Yeah. Off spawn, immediate tap fire, and if that was a headshot, oh baby, that would have been one hell of a start for Space Station. Yeah, it certainly would have. Uh... Unfortunately, Fultz doesn't have the cap tower now, so Corey hanging out in CCTV might be a little harder to deal with, depending on how they go to play this, but it looks like they're going east stairwell first. Setting up for a little bit of a different take. Of course, CCTV is all the more important on this particular bomb site than it is even on lockers. Is you do need that control to be able to play from above onto customs itself. It's so much easier with a thermite too when you can push in from passport, blow the wall, and plant inside customs, but it's obviously not going to be available. They would have to use the Habana for that. Much more easily read, and they have the Kaede to be able to stop that potentially. And he is playing down here for exactly that reason. Make sure that they can't get in there. x was coming off here to open up some of the wall, was that? As well as breach charges. So they're starting to blow things open for Rise, who gets droned out and has the option to drop, but decides to just dig deeper in. Interesting uh, isolation here for Space Station Gaming, going for the one man holding armory. And honestly, this is just to make sure that they can have some presence on West Balcony without feeling like they're going to be peaked. The armory yeah. wall is soft with a hole open in it for Rise to peek through. So you definitely don't want to be trying to contend with the window angle and the uh, the west balcony from Armory. So he's going to rip right on back into CCTV, join the rest of his teammates. The Jackal track not successful in acquiring a pick there, but they did evade a Nitro Cell in the process, so baiting out the yeah. utility and... Uh oh looks like Ryze might have been having an issue, but he's dead now either way, so it doesn't matter, but oh, unfortunately... everybody died. There goes the team, and that happens sometimes. So we'll see what the result of that round is, uh, whether or not we'll replay it. Could be something they have to replay, or it could be just considered, uh, you know, for whatever reason, given over to SSG. But we'll see. Obviously, up to the admins. Looks like there's some discussion going on between the admins and Coach Lycan of SSG, trying to figure things out. And unfortunately, that means, you know, take a screenshot of the scores right there, so you at least can try and figure out how many kills SSG will have going into the later part, because, unfortunately, the scores will get reset, at least in the personal scoreboard. And of course, during the remake, we'll have to make those first five rounds, maybe the sixth round, in terms of uh, putting that data back in. Corey with his headphones off already. Just chewing his gum or something. Mm, they can't hear us. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Corey, they're behind you. <laughs> so we'll see what the result is. Obviously, we're waiting to find out as well what's going to go down. Some communication going on with the admins. 
as they decide what happened. Might have just been a tech issue, though. It looked like Rise might have had a crash or something like that. We saw him kind of doing the old jog in place. It uh, it looked like all of uh, the Giants' like side just lost connection. It's true. That was that was probably too quick to have been uh, you know them just leaving the game. Oh yeah. No, nah, everyone was DC'd by the end yeah. there. So I'm gonna assume that someone tripped on an Ethernet cable or something. Probably it was probably yeah the router on their side. I got to imagine. You know they probably have their own. Uh, router or hub or some switch going to the main ones and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, looks like I do see some of the wires there on the floor. Maybe that's what they trip on. <laughs> Maybe. Either way, though, Corey is uh, going somewhere there. They're just going to sub him out. Yeah. Just going to stay under the table for the rest of the day. <laughs> no, he's back. Anyways, though, this has definitely been uh, gonna the say match we expected. You could get Krapel in there. You it's could. Not bad. Yeah, no, he's not. I mean,. We have so many coaches that are good players yeah. or former players. I mean, Lycan himself Lycan is a former on the other side, player. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. He uh, also has hundreds of strats. Yes, available. and he also has quite the support staff, including another former pro soft soft. Yeah, definitely a, a, a former teammate as well. Former teammate, yes. From back in the day. So they definitely are prepared to play if needed. Obviously, uh, there's always a chance we'll see a gotcha play this tournament. <laughs> we did see Dizzle in a previous one, though, really show up for his team, and that was the case yep. where... Obviously, a, uh, a flight couldn't be made due to medical issues, but mm -hmm. everyone's here this time. So unless a medical issue comes up in the middle of the tournament. But uh, we're right now just trying to figure out what's going on. Looks like twi literally twiddling their thumbs on SSG. I'm just going to turn on the other monitor so we F can find out what's going on in the other figure game. Figure out what's going so on in the other game. game. Yeah. Means, right? We'll just tell you. We'll yeah. just, we'll let's just, just cast that one. We'll describe it to you Easy. while we wait. Yeah. So it looks, looks like, like it just got underway. All so right, Fnatic yeah. and Dark Zero are going into Bank, apparently map number one, Hibana, Capitao, Echo Oh, Band. Bank for Dark Zero. It's a good map. It's a good map. It is. Yeah. You know, uh, we talked about uh, Milan and Dark Zero's most recent LAN attempts uh, in Vegas as well. Bank was a good map for them. Yeah. Dark Zero I, didn't do particularly well in Vegas. But I'll tell you Milan. what, though. I'm glad to see them back at LANs. Yes. They were the team that were always the third place team. They were always third. getting in when we had three spots. Mm -hmm. And then when APAC came in, everyone was like, oh, no, there's not three spots anymore. And everyone kind of complained. But now that we're having other ways to qualify, other LAN events, minors, things like that, we're seeing Dark Zero again. And I think it's fantastic to see them making it to these LANs and really showing up. They may not win every time, mm -hmm. but they're definitely a strong NA team and a good representative, especially at an event where we have five NA teams in yep. NA. It's definitely looking pretty good for us as a group. Oh, the Monty plays too going on over there. It's getting spicy. Well, it's there. been a uh, particularly sour day for North America thus far. Yeah, it's not, it's not been great. That's true. But SSG are putting up a fight. Yep. EG also did pretty well for NA. Yep. So it, I don't know. I think it's been a mixed bag. Obviously, uh, not everyone was expecting TSM to beat Empire. Nope. I think that was kind of a long shot. Taking map off them honestly impressed me, regardless. So, But uh, I don't know. We're still trying to figure out what we're going to do on this one in terms of... Uh, I got to imagine we're probably putting in the map data as well for the rehost regardless. But again, not entirely sure if they will be uh, replaying that entire round because that got pretty deep into the round. But hard to say. It wasn't a player's fault, I imagine, or anything like that. So. Yeah, that's, that's kind of hard to... Uh, hey, welcome back. It's so, kind of hard to like place blame and, and say, yeah, Giants, someone tripped on a cable, so therefore you lose a round, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you never know. Yeah. But it is hard to like as I was talking about earlier, it's a hard situation because it, someone is going to get an, the unfair end of the stick, regardless, right? And so you, if you replay the round, some pe some teams disadvantaged at that point, and it's a, it's a tricky one. But nonetheless, it's it's been a really good match so far between these two. This is, I, I mean... Going a, a bit more even than what we saw earlier in the Rogue SSG, for example, or yeah. the G2 one after. So on the B stream so far, I think this has been the most balanced match we've had. And uh, SSG have been putting up a really strong fight, even on the rounds they haven't won. So I feel like we're still seeing, uh, I almost want to call them LFO still, I'm not used to the yeah. price part, uh, still kind of warming up. Yep. I honestly feel like, like for example, Corey took a couple rounds to really get into it. We haven't seen Rise with tons of kills just yet. We haven't seen Aces really getting a lot of kills. I feel like maybe Map 2 will see an even stronger Giants, but at the same time, they haven't switched sides yet. This would be the last round before they would switch sides. So I don't know. I, I feel like SSG just came out swinging a bit harder at first, even if they didn't necessarily win all those rounds. Uh, so we got an update actually from Hicks in the all chat because oh, uh, we are getting people back in lobby. That's good. Um, apparently the power went out on their side. Well, that will do it. That'll that'll kind of do it. 
Okay, so we're restarting the sixth round. So we're going to play it over again. Just got word from the admin. So yep. should be an interesting round to see you again. Uh, deja vu. Got to go same site, same ops, yep. as always, with the uh, with the rehost. So, But there's always the variables to consider. You can change how you play. You yes. can change where you drone and position your drone. You can change how you reposition your gadgets. You can change which walls you reinforce. You can change where you're playing. There's a lot that both teams can do differently. They just cannot change the site or the ops. Exactly. So. Well, I think it's interesting in some ways, too, because it's almost this Groundhog's Day sort of thing, right? Where it's the same day, but it could play out totally differently. Yeah. So, just taking a second to get back into there, of course, again, as we said, they have to remake the whole lobby. They have to put in those first five rounds with all the data. Make sure it's accurate, because the last thing we want to do is a rehost of a rehost. Those are always embarrassing. So hopefully we won't have that here. But as I said, too, you will lose, of course, the scoreboard. So it'll be harder for us to kind of tell uh, who's been fragging out over the whole map. It's just kind of a little bit of memory in terms of that. But I always find it's, it's, it's a little hard to tell sometimes who's been fragging out really well when they're not necessarily the star player that you're seeing. Because mm -hmm. you'll see players like, you look at the scoreboard and be like, oh, I didn't realize he'd already gotten that many kills because we were paying so much attention to someone else. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have the scoreboard to kind of back that up. That happened to us. We were out watching the EG and IP game. We'll get yeah. some food, and out, out of nowhere, Nate just had, you know, 15 yeah. kills like, by the oh. end of it. Worse. Yeah, same with, same with Canadian. Was just, yeah. was doing some serious work. So definitely, again, watch that VOD if you missed it. EG played a heck of a game, especially Canadian really showing up. But uh, we, we have yet to see who's going to, quote unquote, really show up for this as we're only uh, just six rounds, well, five rounds deep, however you want to put it. We're just waiting for one more player to get in, so we are almost there. Looks like uh, the round getting underway pretty good over here on the uh, DZ and Fnatic match. So far, DZ with a strong start, though. Fnatic are going to have a bit of an uphill battle. As Dark Zero have a lot more opportunity to play against stronger teams, I would say, whereas Fnatic are stuck in more of a smaller region. So during the season overall, Dark Zero is going to have a bit better of a warm-up. But at the same time, there are other really good Australian teams right now. In fact, I think this is two seasons in a row where we've seen uh, Fnatic not be the top team some of the time mm -hmm. uh, and really struggle against some of the other ANZ teams. So it's, I don't know, it's getting much better region. I, and I got to credit some of that to the fact that Fnatic's been to basically every LAN since, uh, probably every LAN, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I think every single one uh, that we've had APAC come out to in fact, actually going back to uh, Dizzle even playing at the very first Invitational on uh, Xbox at the time I when it was Mind Freak. I don't so. think they were at Sao Paulo. That, I wasn't either, so oh, okay. that's, that's, <laughs> my, that's why. But uh, what I was going to say with that is them bringing that experience back to the region yeah. has been buffing that region as a whole. And now we have two Japanese teams in. They're going to bring that experience back. Yeah, Cyclops struggled a bit against G2, but they're going to take that. They're going to learn from that. Bring that back to Japan. Norango also going to do that. I mean, Cyclops isn't out yet, of course, because there's a loser's bracket. But we are about to get underway here. It looks like the round's starting, hopefully going to be played. As the uh, op picks go back in, there shouldn't be any surprise op picks here. Nope. We, uh, we botched it. Oh, no. Well, jumped the gun. So it looks like they might have just had the wrong bomb sites won, unfortunately. So going to have to rehost the rehost. So it may take just a second here, and we may or may not need to go to a break to set all that back up again, as I think we're running out of things to talk about at this point. Eh, I mean, it'll only take a couple seconds. Uh, hopefully. Well, they've got to re-put all the uh, bomb sites in correctly eh, this time. That doesn't take too long. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Monty coming out again, too, on the Fnatic side. They are having some fun over there. Those kids. Yeah. Again, I hopefully you're doing the multi-twitch so you can make sure to catch all the action on both. Yeah, hopefully you're not just sitting here listening to us ramble because uh, all we're doing here is killing time. Cause yeah, you can always have both streams on and mute one of them. Yeah, I highly recommend doing I don't ever want to recommend muting uh, myself, but at the same time, hey. I, I, I mean, if, if it helps you watch, then go for it. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not here to... Where's the real-time subtitles? Yeah, I'm not here to hold you to listening to our voices. Yeah, but our international cast as well. If English isn't your first, that's language. true. We have a, a quite a few Japanese casters. We have the Brazilian casters. I'm not sure if we have any other languages, but not as far sure. as I know, it's just Brazil and Japan but right there now. There are studios. Like yeah, the clean France. Feed. France is doing uh, one. Yeah. Uh, I imagine German probably. Germany's well. so doing I imagine one. Yeah. Probably Verdi Pones, as he tends to. It's Verdi and oh, I forget his name. Super dude. Yeah. Like. Dude. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, I, name's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, I forget his name. I feel so bad now. 
He's gonna beat you up now. Oh, probably. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't take much for yeah, him to beat me up. One swing, you're down. It's like Good six, night, six, Flynn. 300, man. I am not, <laughs> yeah. uh, not making it through that one, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> All right, well, let's get underway again. Uh, this is gonna cool down the teams, too. So it'll be interesting to see who actually can bring the momentum back after such a long break. Because it, this really can have an effect on you as a team, especially getting time to discuss things as well. You're going to be sitting there. You might overthink things. You might overthink all the plays that happened so far, just in terms of like uh, maybe over criticizing your own mistakes. Mm -hmm. You get too much into your head and kind of lose focus on the game. It's tricky, man. The psychological game is a real beast, especially in games where confidence plays a huge part. Well, still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we sure I look at Krapel too. Just uh, yep. Come on, guys. Krapel's a funny guy. Yeah, I like a lot. he's interesting. Yeah, he's been around for quite a while now too. Very long time now, yeah. I mean, he, he's definitely one of the longest-running coaches for a team consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have Shaz, so yeah. it'd be hard to beat Shaz's long, long-running consistency with his team. Mm -hmm. I think so far on Border, it's been it's been fairly close. There have been rounds, like you said, that you know it could have started off as a 3-0. Yeah. Or for SSG instead of a uh, a 2-1, but I think. I think the Giants have learned from their mistakes. And that last round there kind of, I don't know, put an exclamation point on it for you yeah. where it's like, hey, we're here to play. And even if it's not the prettiest outcome, all we care about is the win. And yeah. we've talked, like, even in Valencia, I was talking to, to Rise on the interview and behind the scenes talking about, you know, mentality and, and not letting yourself, I guess, feel the pressure. Because this is a team that's struggled notoriously on land for a long, long yeah, time now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last land that this team won before... Um, actually, the last land they've won in, in general was DreamHack Austin. At least they have a lot of experience with it, and so it's like it's not a new environment to them. No, it's just a question of figuring out why they are, are not doing as well on it. Yeah, and uh, you know, Rise was just talking about like professional mentality. Don't go in with emotions. Go in level-headed. So I don't think like, the breaks or anything. We even had like the fire alarms going off in Valencia. Yeah. in the middle of the LFO game. That was so, pretty cool. I mean. These guys, they, uh, they they're smiling a lot, though. So hey, I think that's helping. Like you said, you don't want to ever get let emotion get into it, but smiling is part of an emotion too. So eh. hopefully they don't get a little too they don't ahead have of themselves. Negative emotions coming. Absolutely, yeah. So I think they're I think they're confident going back into this that they could turn it around. Whereas you look at SSG, they're looking a little bit more kind of focused. It's almost where you need to throw up a few memes or something, jokes. You know, keep it keep it kind of light. So. Hopefully, we got everyone back into the lobby here. Lobby's remade. Just a question of they might just be double checking all the settings, making sure, again, as I said, it's a little embarrassing to have the rehost the rehost, and unfortunately, we did. Cast your curse, right? So. Cast your curse, baby. You had to say it. Yep. And then down at the bottom of the screen, of course, there's the, the fantastic ticker we have going. Yes. Some good important facts about matches so far, things like that. We have also got our good buddy, uh, Spleck from CGG, helping provide extra information for things. and. Extra stats for us as well, so shout out to them doing God's work as usual mm -hmm. to help out with uh, making sure a lot of interesting facts come along. And I imagine those will develop over the course of this week as well as we yeah. build some of the uh, quote unquote storylines among these different teams and how things shape up now that it's international. So As you hear Parker scream over yeah. the banister. The, uh, the Fnatic and Dark Zero game is actually a bit of a barn burner right now, I'm not going to lie. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, we're we're getting enthralled in the uh, right, right. game on the other stream right now. We're just watching it on our second monitor or third monitor. So yeah, I'm not sure what's uh, what's the delay right now, but I think I I assume they're just confirming things. Probably just triple, quadruple checking. Things. Yeah, let's let's not do that again. They are starting the the round again. So fingers and toes crossed this time. Magnet goat, magnet goat. All right. Do they have goats in Australia? I don't know. I don't, Excellent think actually. I don't actually know the answer to that question. Uh, all right, we got all the right op bands. We have the right score. We have the right site unlocked. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting back underway. It's all right. border. It's Map one. Time. It's SSG. And it's the Vodafone Giants. All right. So let's get it underway and hope all is well and no more power outages. Not sure what caused it, but hopefully whatever it was, they have resolved it. Hopefully. We had uh, tech stoppages in their first game as well. Yeah, Logan I believe there secret. was. There might have been some audio problems. And honestly, that always happens. I don't know what oh, it yeah. is with audio to land, but it's just guaranteed you're going to get some hardware problems with audio. And it's funny, too, because you'd think audio would be one of the, the simplest things. 
But uh, that's just how it is, honestly. And I've done enough AV stuff to know that that's just how it is across any industry. So we'll get them setting up for customs again. We didn't really get to see the full thing and how they were going to play customs. We did get to see a fair bit of it. For those of you who remember years ago when we started this round. Years ago, yes. Many moons back. Back in 1810 when we started round six. Right, when it was all steampunk. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, uh, that smoke elite looks pretty steampunk. Yeah. Gotta love all those different skins. I like that new Capital one as well. Yes. That was, pretty, that was pretty hype. The new Deagle skin looks pretty good, too. Always with the, with the interesting skins. The there are, um, hands. And it's, yeah, really. For those who are wondering, I believe there is some skins still banned during doing uh, normal Pro League rules in terms of like Wind Bastion skins and stuff like that. Yes, they are. So I don't expect you'll see those unless of a mistake. It's Wind Bastion, the Twitch of Alkalite, the Blood Orchid Universals. Uh, it's funny because now we see so much more of, uh, of Twitch non Elite because <laughs> before it was just like a must buy. Now it's actually just the normal Twitch. Yep, because you can't run Twitch Elite in comp anymore. Doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it at home, though. Exactly. You can play it ranked. Get your R6 credits. Get your Elite skin. Smoke <laughs> Elite got to EG game, so you know. Yeah. Get some R6 credits for that as we sell out for our Ubisoft overlords. Right. <laughs> well, they are. They have some idea what the bomb site's going to be going into this, of course, because you can't change. They have some idea what the setup could be, but they have to double check anything. Making assumptions at this level of play will get you killed. Luckily, they've got a fair bit of utility to get things done. Between the IQ scan and the footprint scan, they do have the ability to at least get some idea from a distance what the setup will be. But a lot of drone work coming out here. It always does surprise me at the Pro League level to see how many people droning for themselves, though, when how, you know, given how effective it is to drone for your teammate. But I think a lot of that just comes down to efficiency of callouts in terms of positioning if you're going to be going for a frag to follow up that drone. Corey. Just doing what he does in CCTV yet again here. Oh, uh, this is, he's got to be careful he doesn't get shot in the feet. Nope. Breach charges are something that kind of died off for a while, but they've really been, I don't know, played a lot the last couple seasons of Pro League just due to their extra utility of finding to see uh, these days, just because there's so many different attack operators to choose from now. Yeah, for the better part of three years, we never saw breaching charges, right? but a couple updates, and suddenly they are extremely useful. Rampy is going to take down Rise, so there's the castle. It's the same pick at almost the same time from the round that did exist, but then didn't. Oh. Rampy with two now onto Corey as well. So the CCTV hold getting picked apart, the armory hold as well. Slow going for Space Station, but at the same time, oh. they're on a roll right now in terms of frags. False collecting, you get another one onto Aces in a battle now with Hicks right outside the workshop door, turning in. Oh, don't know how he hit that. I don't think he knew where he was, but hey, we take those. Hicks will drop faults and now rushing back down as he pulls down the castle barricade, locking him out of the bottom metal stairs. Still a 4v2 in favor of Space Station. Haven't really lost a whole lot by losing faults as there's no echo in play, and you really don't need to know where the Kaid Electric Claws are. Well, you don't really have anyone on site for the most part other than Alfama, who's kind of rotating around at the moment, gets caught off guard as well. Hicks is going to have to help cover for him, but the top floor control here should make this pretty easy to win, especially now that Bosco gets that kill. Hicks, last man standing right across the border, and wow, he's able to down off one onto Rampy, but as he turns the corner into the main hallway, thinking aid has him cut off on any possible rotates. Easy trade. There you go, Space Station. Still able to get the round, no problems. We head into the half at a 3-3 score. So both teams showing they can handle attack and defense, but will it change when they switch sides? Can the Vodafone's Giants pull off as good of an attack as we saw from SSG? Because I feel like, as I said earlier, definitely could be a 4-2 scoreline if there hadn't been some missteps earlier on. Now, Corey going to bring that Capitao. Potentially, they are going to go with Capitao IQ, assuming they don't sixth pick off those as well. But an Ash coming out from Rise. Haven't seen much Ash today outside of uh, Slash bringing it earlier, although there might have been some rounds we missed from other matches. But uh, hasn't been a highly played operator. They've got them all confirmed, though. No six picks coming out. Just straight up playing it. Surprising, given how many six picks have been a factor so far. But no uh, Echo, I don't think I saw. Let me check here. Yeah, no Echo being played from uh, SSG. They don't want to go with it, but they are going to bring the Mozzie. And they are going to reinforce, I imagine, both locker walls. But no Kayet, though, to be able to stop that. So they're actually just going to let them get open, uncontested. Interesting choice, because when we saw that you know, go before, you generally go with the uh, soft wall on part of it so you could open it and be able to fight it. Like, if you're going to lose it anyways, just fight it. But they've got nothing other than the Mute Jammer. Stop it. 
that's not going to last long, let's be honest. That's, that's probably going to get taken up pretty quick, especially when you've got both the IQ and the buck. The IQ can just spot it, shoot it with the pistol. The buck can just do the usual buck things and open it up without too much worry. Plenty of utility, but they've also got the capped out, which means playing behind half wall is going to be very dangerous. And since that wall is likely to get open fairly quickly, you're not going to get much of a chance to rotate there either, especially if they play the sandwich window the way that Bosco was playing in the previous rounds. This could be difficult, assuming the attack even comes from the archive side, uh, the locker side, I mean, because it come from, could come from the archives and office side, which we haven't seen a lot of so far, but that looked like the side they might have actually been attacking from. Take a look at the attackers there. We do have a lot of, oh, there we go. Nice pick early on to the Ash. Rampy doing some work. That is a really good start that the entry frag are down. Rice just not having the, the greatest day here. Tellers, break door. I mean, it looked like Rampy might even shot through the floor. It was break door. He was inside breaker and he's just tapping. All right. Wall. Does he have a long angle open? No, he doesn't. He actually is just tap firing a wall and picked up a headshot on a rise. <laughs> well, that's got to feel good. Again, you take those, man. Yeah, especially after take the last round, too. Deal. That's going to be a confidence booster. Even though it was a, technically a freebie, you're still going to be feeling good after that. Just don't let it go to your head and <laughs> make some dumb plays. Yeah, well, Rampy still got off his lockdown, and losing Rise has clearly slowed down the Giants momentarily. Yeah. Bosco rotating over towards Customs. There's no one in CC for the defense, but neither for the attack. It looks like... The Giants are hard set on taking into office. They're just slow with it right now. Yeah. Corey is taking, oh, I was going to say he's taking control of the archives window, but he's actually peeled off of it already, just trying to make it so it's open if they need it later, but also to make them have to watch it. A lot of SSG kind of spread out in a bit of a defense web here at the moment because they don't seem to know where the attack is coming from just yet. But I got to say, it doesn't seem like uh, Vodafone Giants know where it's coming from either yet because they lost their entry and didn't seem to have a follow up entry. Yeah, yeah, you still have Rampy inside of the office sandwich, and you've got Thinking Nate playing inside a fountain. This is troublesome thus far. Yeah. And Bosco oh. will claim another one onto Hicks. There goes your buck and your ash. That's a lot of your soft destruction taken away. Aces might have breaching charges for soft destruction. You've already done most of it, but there is some more you could envy doing, and yet you're not going to be able to now. And it's all the Chala locking things down. Rampy will finally fall inside of office, but battling back and forth with a long range with these ACOGs between Corey and Chala. No one actually land, landing a lethal blow just yet and thinking nade as his wall gets opened up by the X Kairos. He's still playing inside a fountain with no fears. This is bad here. And Bosco again, another one onto Alfamo with the Nitro Cells. So it's down to Corey and Aces, and Aces has pushed it up 90. Huge separation between Corey and Aces, the last two remaining members for the Giants and the attack, and they're gonna get picked apart one by one here. Aces slowly pushing in as they regroup together. Corey Wary of a flanking thinking nade will cut him down from inside a fountain. Make it two! The SMG 11 on the mute inside a fountain, and thinking nade, the Afro Man himself. Give Space Station a lead once again. What a great defense. Just office was nothing but a graveyard for Vodafone Giants. They could not get any presence in there. Rampy started that off with that top firing, and just after that, it seemed like the attack just completely fell apart. They didn't have a good follow up, they weren't ready to make any kind of pushes in. It's, I mean, that's awkward given the fact that the, for example, the thermite ban was the Vodafone Giants, Giants, so they had to have a plan for attack without that thermite, but it just did not look like it that round at all. I mean, great play from everyone on SSG. You had that Rampy play early, then you had Bosco, then you had uh, Thinking Aid picking it up at the end. Just everyone doing their job and just no ground gained by the Vodafone Giants at all. However, keep in mind, this was SSG's map pick. Yes. So they obviously came into it with some thoughts. I think border's pretty even uh, for all teams. Like, it's the easiest map right now in the comp pool to learn. It's the one that pretty much everyone said is, is figured out now. It's starting yeah. to get to Oregon status that way. It's getting there. I think the viability of more than two bomb sites helps it with its competitive standing. Absolutely. That does make a big difference. Right? But it is a tired map. Yeah. It is pretty default for most holds. Definitely a possibility that as uh, new map reworks and new maps come out, we could see it rotated out. But that's up to the players and Ubi and ESL and all them to kind of figure out Obviously, that's not going to happen for the second half of the season or anything like that. So it'll be a while before any kind of map pool changes come out. But who knows? I mean, obviously, we have panels and things like that to maybe announce stuff during the weekend. I'm not hinting anything. I literally don't know. Just to be clear there, I'm not hinting. I just bring it up because, yeah, Border was SSG's map pick, but 
come on, every team has borders. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Every team can play borders. But to so. be fair, uh, Vodafone Giants did not play. Ooh, nice pick on Chala early, and that's the Maestro. Hello? That's going to leave those cameras looking wherever they were looking and nowhere else. It's also an all the gone and one of your best support players. Yeah. Removed from play. Where in the living hell was Chala? Well, we know where he's at now, six feet under. Is he spawn peeking? Where? I can't find his body. Right? Is there, way, is there a way to snap to a corpse? This is not looking good for uh, SSP used to be early on, though. They removed the feature of snapping to corpses. Is it, was that in a 90 hallway, maybe? I think it might have been 90. It might have got shot through the soft wall. It's just trying to rotate back. That's an unfortunate and pick once again. Yeah, I think it's saw his leg in the, yeah, yeah, in the hallway. He might, yeah, he might have been rotating. He even just got picked through the soft wall in CCTV. That is a tough break. And honestly, right. it was Ryze who got picked off of that tough break on the peak uh, from Ramsey's That's true. office. So he's fair, fair play, right? Dealing him back. Well, he is alive now this time. Exactly. So now they've got CCTV control, so they can start to push. Uh, the <laughs> Unfortunately, the Thatcher is not there just yet to help open up that uh, hatch. I don't know if anyone on Vodafone is aware that Thinking Nade's laying prone in behind the half wall upstairs in Armory right now. Uh, he's just kind of hanging out, you know? Doesn't oh, seem like a Corey knows now. Yep. Just droned him out. But will he win the fight? There's no guarantee there. A lot of pre-firing coming out. They don't have the caps out to help with this or anything. Thinking does take a lot of damage, and Hicks finished the job. Just moments too late there for Fultz to save his comrade upstairs. So they'll lose another one, but at least trade Hicks out pretty quickly. Still got Alfama outside of the vent window, so this plant again angling in towards to go to ventilation. We haven't seen any attempt at really a workshop plant coming out yet, and it's not the biggest surprise, but it does happen every now and again. It used to be the norm. You go for an office take and push down and get bathroom control and yeah. pushing for workshop plants, but it seems like everyone nowadays... That helped with thermite, though. Yep. Like, they don't have thermite in place, so I can kind of see why they would not necessarily go for that, but you're right, that was that's kind of the one of the de facto attacks. Still standing with uh, not a lot of progress. There's a lot of lining up in the front door here. If Fultz can find a pixel, that could be huge. Level up man count. Even with all the utility in your back pocket, this is still going to be a struggle to try and hold out. That's Rampy's own drone that's heading into ventilation yeah. on the Mozzie. I like, like that. Instead of running the C4, Bosco's running the impacts on the Kayad. So, oh no, there goes the oh, Fultz. That Beautiful. pixel. Beautiful spot there from Corey, and now peeking from the main hallway with the TCSG. Alfamo will blast down Bosco. No luck there. So it's Rampy in a 1v4 rotating to the hallway. Two members of the Giants are low on HP, and they have to get a plant down, stopping the plant now. Will be Rampy, but a Corey filling right in. Too much manpower to deal with for Rampy in the 1v4. So the Giants will again equalize at a 4-4. It's a game on border, baby. <laughs> We're going the distance. We certainly are, and this is, you know, for good reason. These teams both know this map, as you said very well. It's a classic. Teams that know it inside and out. The operator bands weren't going to be a huge factor in that, other than the thermite band. The bandit one, I don't feel like factored a ton into it. No. But uh, it certainly does change up things a little bit. Echo being uh, allowed definitely made a difference for Vodafone Giants, but it doesn't seem like SSG want to play that. Or they were just, all their strats were planning to not have it because of how often it's banned. But they're definitely running the Maestro, assuming he can stay alive a little bit longer this round. They are going to try vents yet again. Which, you know, fair enough. It's definitely a good bomb site. They just were not able to hold it very effectively last round, despite some decent plays early on. Uh, as you mentioned, the just not saving Thinking Nate behind the half wall definitely cost them quite a bit, because that could have been a great delay against Corey, uh, just slowing down their ability to take it, but it just didn't seem like he had the intel to be able to stay alive as well. Mm -hmm. I liked the, the drone from Rampy helping watch B, because we were talking about how Vodafone Giants weren't catching the plants coming down half the time. That's yeah. where that drone really would have helped if it got to that point. And I imagine when he was the last left alive trying to clutch, his teammates were probably watching that. It's call for him, and you saw that one ping did come out inside vents, but there was just too many people left alive at that point to fight against. Speaking of drones, the Giants have lost three in prep phase, so we talk about drone yep. economy, and hey, Giants losing some early. Granted, those could have been mozzied instead of just straight up shot. We don't get to see that That's in true. prep phase. Oh, baby rise. What you doing here, honey? <laughs> okay. That's, that's one way to say it. Oh, no. Oh, no. It makes an immediate access into a uh, supply room, punching open the window, and it looked like he was catching someone off guard. I don't know who that was for Space Station that was close by, but... Well, didn't do any damage, though. That's the important thing. And Chala actually hoping that someone wants to open that window again. Nope, no one's going to fall for it. 
He's it's trying to do uh, the reverse of what happened to him last time. There's been a lot of that going around today. A lot yeah. of wall bangs, and I mean, that's land, man. That's land. Absolutely. But you got to take advantage of that giant magazine you get in that gun. You might as well, right? Yep. Slow going again here for the Giants is... Yep. Man, I, I must say, this is a very different looking team than we saw in Valencia just a, a month and a half ago for this team. You know, that team in Valencia looked very, I guess, directional. They looked like they had a, a mission and a purpose every round. In the early portions of the round here for the Giants, that just hasn't been the same case. They look yeah. They look like they're more feeling out their opponent in the think of every round than coming in with a mission every round. It seems like, yeah, they want to get an idea what the setup is like because they just don't seem as familiar with SSG or they're just not familiar with the way that SSG is playing. Mm -hmm. And they're really trying to make sure that they execute well onto the intel, but then this starts to make it look more like a vitality style round. Yeah, there's been a lot of collapses in the dying seconds, and I think that's just a factor from... The Giants not really guess, utilizing the time. It the worked last round. It did. They got the picks necessary. This is still event workshop defense, so yeah. the collapse here for the Giants is going to have to be swift and it's going to have to be immediate. They haven't cleared out Armory or Archives. I think he yeah. has retreated over towards the uh, the Archives wall there. And uh, Chala playing all the way on the Archives hatch. This is a good angle here from him. I like that. Cut down the rotate. Yeah. But still, not clearing out the top floor means Bucket's not going to be nearly as effective because he's limited to one angle. And uh, you still got attack downstairs, but Rise, unfortunately, running into bullets and thinking nade. Nice C4 rip there. He's still got to watch out for Sandwich, but he manages to cross safely without getting picked. And then Rampy following it up in Alfama. This round is falling apart. 30 seconds left or so. This is this is done for Vodafone. Chala the savior there for thinking nade. And now it's aces alone in a 1v5 inside of the small office. Call it a flawless, flawless. round. Flawless. Space Station Gaming. North Back. American representative North. here at the USA Major in Raleigh, North Carolina. They're going to take it up 5-4 now. And that's going to cue a tactical timeout from the Giants. And no surprise there, they don't want to be on the back foot. They've been in the lead so often. Now being down and close to map point, I can understand why they'd want to take that. I mean, they had enough of a break earlier. Come on, guys. Give us a break. Don't take another break. But I don't think SSG have used theirs yet either, so we could see that happen if it gets into overtime. I imagine they might use theirs. But lockers is where we will be going again. So, should be interesting. We haven't seen the third bomb site for SSG just yet because they haven't had to play one. But if they win lockers here, they will. So... Krapel rallying the troops, trying to get them heads back in the game. But to be fair, I don't know if they need it too much. They, they've been back and forth, these two teams. I don't think there's anything hugely lacking. But if Krapel's seeing something that's not working, I saw, for example, Corey nodding at whatever Krapel was saying there for a second, just trying to help them shore up some of those weaknesses. Maybe he's going to help them speed up that attack, get some more confidence going. I mean, you have an Ash player. There should be some more aggression coming out, right? It's just, and he's he's gonna be on it again unless he six picks. So, you would expect a bit more early map control from this lineup. Ace is gonna pull out that, and that good timing because of course there's the Kaid coming out as well. So they're gonna have to make sure they know that and drone that out, so you can adequately thatch something we were talking about. Thinking Nade having trouble with earlier, and so it's ironic that it is Thinking Nade on that Kaid. So maybe he's gonna do it. Got done to him if they time it right. Well, I must say, I'm rather impressed with Space Station's play so far through map one here. This has been, yeah. I think a lot of people look at the online performances from Space Station Gaming and they think that Space Station just doesn't have what it takes to kind of peek over the edge yeah. to be in that upper echelon. But I think best of threes are their natural habitat. You know, we've seen that with yeah. a team like TSM as well. That's, that's what I was going to point out. Is yeah. they're the penultimate version of that. And uh, honestly, it's kind of the inverse here for the Giants. They're a yeah. team that are a masterful team online in BO1s in the online play. But once they get to land, things kind of change for them. You see that a lot from the Latin American teams as well. Yeah. They tend to be flipped in. And, and that's the, the the sad part is that we have to use a mostly online play to qualify for offline play. But some of these teams got in through the offline play. You had the match, the first match of the day, both those teams got in through best of three lands. So yep. definitely a, a bit of a mix between the two sets here. But as you said, uh, SSG looking very good. And Boto and Giants struggling a little bit, but I mean, they're still keeping up. Both these teams doing very well. I gotta imagine, uh, you know, whoever goes forward is gonna put up a pretty good fight tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And that will be against evil geniuses. Whoever wins this game, the loser will go on to face ninjas in pajamas. I'm sure EG's hoping for it to be uh, SSG because it's a team they know a lot better. Yeah, I actually can't remember the last time EG would have played this team. Definitely not with this exact roster. Yeah. Well, they are getting in and getting map control a lot sooner, at least in the bottom half of the map. Rise doing that. So, oh, nice job. Good teamwork there from Ry or Hicks with the grenade and then Rise finishing off the drop onto Thinking Nade. Good early start. Now that's the Kaede down, so this wall should be a lot easier to take care of. They could just thatch it and open it. And then also losing the Mozzie means they should be able to hopefully get a little bit more map control, get some more droning going on. I mean, they read that like a book. Yeah. They knew the drop was coming. They knew exactly where the man was playing in behind the uh, the server desk. So, excellent droning, or maybe they've <laughs> uh, done some VOD review on this and knew yeah. exactly what this setup was going to look like, what I was expected, indicated. Laughing because Alfama was still in spawn like a minute and a half into the round because he was doing all that droning. Chala, though, with a nice follow up on Aces means the Thatcher is now down, but I think the Electrical has already been taken care of, sadly. Yeah, there's nothing on the wall right now, so that'll be free real estate for Alfama to come and rip open with the ex Kairos. And Charla trying to get a little lucky here on anyone entering in through the break room door. Flashbang's coming out. They will start burning out the ADS so they can get rid of this deployable shield, and that'll push Fultz off of his preferred angle. Now he'll have to play right in front of Charla in behind the bomb. The drone's coming out, and it still seems like Space Station are stretched between both bomb sites, even though the stack for the Giants really leaning itself towards yeah. an armory wall plan. It's pretty obvious where they're going to be going. They do have the cap tower as well to be able to smoke things off. And a lot of smoke's being used early by Fultz here that could backfire on them because there's still 40 seconds left. But Hicks does take a big gulp of it. Wow, Rampy's able to take down Corey before being dropped. And I actually, I think it was just the asphyxiating bolt on the tail end there that was enough to down him but not finish him off. I don't think they're going to try and go for the revive no. here. There's I not wish a they had a dock, I'm sure. Fultz laying prone in behind the half wall will be a distraction and possibly a surprise here for the Giants. And I don't think they know that Rampy is down. This could be a rush into the mini office as well as Hicks will blow that open with the skeleton key and Rise creeping his way up metal stairs. This could catch Chala off guard, but no, Chala laying in wait, expecting it all the way. And Fultz will wrap it up with two from behind the half wall. Space Station Gaming push themselves to match point on map number one. It was such a great start to that round, too. Yep. By Vodafone Giants, they just couldn't follow it up on the execute. You talked about how how uh, spread out the defense was, but maybe that worked to their advantage. They were able to play a bit more angles. They weren't necessarily exposing themselves too much to the push. It did work out in the end, but it, some of that was due to just some misplays. Rise really shouldn't have re-peaked that without pre-firing, because he knew exactly where Chala was, saw him, re-peaked it, and then waited to click. That gave Chala the advantage, because Chala could pre-fire that as Maestro. That's You really needed to have been coming back up, just ready to click that as soon as possible. Just, you know, th small things like that can cost you the round. And, uh, I mean, a great play by Corey getting the Capitan Bolt to down him, but losing Corey definitely also cost them the ability to do a lot more control in that execute, both from the fire and the smoke. And losing him, I think, cost them the ability to push in and cause a, a lot of pressure. And now it's map point. Well, since the break, it's been all SSG all day. It three sure has. Five. Since the break at a 3-3 draw. You can see that from the scores as well. Of course, those got reset in the rehost, but mm -hmm. Rampy thinking made. Well, everyone really in SSG picking it up big time. Looking pretty good for them as a team overall. And uh, let's see if they can manage to close out or if they're going to kind of choke up a little bit, give the Giants some comeback potential here. Well, we saw that from Secret as well on map two earlier on today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that comeback from Rogue. Five rounds in a Ooh. row on uh, those bank. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's it's dangerous. You know, you get this lead, you're close to closing it up, and if the nerves start getting to you, thinking you just need to play a little more perfect. Sometimes it almost feels it like being on map points the worst place to be with just how much it can make you choke up from pressure. It's stressful because you think, you overthink a lot of things when you're in that situation, uh, especially for more inexperienced teams. Both of these teams story, so I don't imagine that will creep yeah, in. Very but. true. For a lot of teams that are a lot newer, you know, you get on that match point and you think it's over, it's over. Either either ease, ease off the gas pedal or you start trying to perfect every little play when yeah. in reality, as long as you make a play, it'll work out for you. So not trying to overthink anything. We're uh, heading in towards customs here as the yeah. passport check wall will get blown open by the ex-Kairos there from Alfama. And again, the spread for the Giants, I 
Right now, I don't know where they're trying to enter in through as far as their push. They obviously have to clear out CCTV. Last time around, we saw Space Station Gaming going for a clear over towards uh, Archives and Office. For the Giants here, they're a little more direct, straight to the repels on the West Balcony, at the same time blowing open the passport wall. So it's a bit of a split yeah. push here. I like this from Chala, though. He's helping guard against some of those repels getting too sloppy. And he's going to absolutely punish them as soon as someone gets in that position. Fultz already punishing aces. Hopefully, they don't need that Thatcher. They did get the passport wall open, as you mentioned. So, and then uh, this is the first time though we're seeing customs from SSG Oil. Oh, they are starting to get the ability to, the fact that Vodafone Giants are hanging out outside so long is giving a lot of rotate ability to SSG, but that actually gets punished by Rise. Still though, they're giving way too much flexibility to SSG right here. And this is definitely gonna cost them. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that at home, but it Taro's a little excited. Oh, that shot by Rise, that's two for him now. Taking down Chala, but finally punished by Rambi, he got way too many kills there. And this is uh, starting to actually fall apart a little bit for SSG, despite it being 3-3, but at least they've managed to burn two minutes. Oh, I'm thinking, Nate, let's put them back on the advantage to try and wrap up map one with a nice little bow as Alfama will go down with Diffuser lost oh. outside of Passport Wall and no one close to recollect. Hicks, though, will trade out one <laughs> up to Rampy, immediately flick to the hologram and reveal his position momentarily. 45 on the clock, so you have a bit of time to work with here if you're Vodafone start to pick your way through this. And the skeleton key from above, but the hatch is reinforced. Corey saw thinking they'd rotate into the back of customs. This could be dangerous here as Corey turns the corner, anticipating thinking Nate's position, but a flank coming out now from Bosco into passport check. Bosco again, control the diffuser, and now it's Hicks alone, now down to a 1v1. Immediately pounces to get that refrag, and he'll pick up the diffuser, hitting a lesion mine now on top of the diffuser as well, just killing more and more time. All thinking Nate has to do is wait. They have the default cam up for a moment there to spot his location as he turns the corner. Thinking Nade will put him on ice. Space Station Gaming on North American soil will take map number one. Well done as well. That was definitely a good map for them. Like I said, even though some of those early rounds did go to Vodafone Giants, I honestly could feel through and through this was SSG's map. This was definitely one they were very comfortable on. It was their map pick. It was one they've played uh, during the season, whereas Vodafone Giants have not. So as we go to Coastline, though, it is going to be interesting because SSG also have a very good history on Coastline. Both these teams do. So I could, I don't know, I could see this going either way. Could go to a map three or could go to a 2-0. Well, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the replays. Enjoy a little bit of time off. We're going to take a little bit of a breather here. And on the other side of the break, we'll have map number two, which will be Coastline between SSG and the Vodafone Giants.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Raleigh Major, North Carolina. <laughs> SSG up one nothing. <laughs> It'll take you're, in, you're insulting the entire state right now. Oh, I'm 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 glad I am. I'm Canadian. All right. Yeah. I, I don't understand America. You're like I I'm not from here. It's fine. I'm not from here. It's fine. So that's SSG, the North American representatives on home territory, taking map number one against yep. the Giants. A a team that a lot of team were uh, teams were fearing heading in. High hopes for this uh, former majority French squad. Now kind of from all over the world. It's the org curse. It's the org curse. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Border's a strong map for Space yeah. Station. And it was their pick, but like I said, it's Border. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows Border, so. Well, Coast as well, these two teams know very well. They both played it twice in Pro League so far. Both uh, did pretty well, although uh, it was, so 7-2, seven, 7-2 two, seven, two for Vodafone Giants against Vitality and Navi. But then SSG have a draw against Rogue, which I mentioned earlier during the Rogue match. Uh, as well as a 7-4 against Luminosity. So they also have a very good track record on it, but Vodafone Giants with a slight advantage there, not only in that they were both wins, but they were very not close wins, 7-2s. So obviously that's why this was their map pick, but it also means they've shown some of their strats online, and I imagine they're going to change some of them up, but SSG has had some time to look at how they play it, and of course vice versa on that. So both these teams anticipating the other team to play the way they expect to. That This is where you throw the curveballs out, hope they work, trying to really uh, read the other team and adapt as much as possible. So we could either see some really slow first rounds or some really aggressive ones, depending on how confident they feel in that information. Well, as the ticker at the bottom reads out for you, there's $500,000 on the line here, 200 grand to first place. That's a hefty chunk of change right there. That could buy you a lot of gun skins. <laughs> yes, it could. A lot of R6 credits for all those elite skins that are coming out. There you go. And the pilot program skins that are coming out Ooh. that will get to be teased on Sunday. That so should be fun. That should be fun, too. Who will be in it? We'll have to wait and see. Yep. Actually, I have no idea. If I don't either. That's why we will have Sunday. to. I imagine because that's what all the rumors have been saying. I'll be honest. I actually kind of like to be in the dark on some stuff. So yeah. it's exciting when it's revealed uh, to me as well. So I imagine pilot program stuff will be on Sunday, but I could be wrong on that. I don't. I don't actually know. Don't take my word. For yeah, it. you're gonna get. You're gonna get sued now. I'm gonna get in trouble. There's already a Reddit thread. Flynn said this. <laughs> I've clipped it. That's the thing. I don't actually. They know. won't clip that part though, where guessing. you said I don't know. They just clip just the part guessing. where you sounded like you knew. Exactly right. Context doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what Twitch clips are for. Exactly. Well, oh, we're just waiting to get underway here. We'll be heading to yeah. map number two, which would be Coast Space Station Gaming taking Clubhouse. They have uh, switched uh, sides now, border. so SSG will be starting defense yep. and Vodafone Giants on attack. SSG took border 7-4. The same oh. scoreline we saw in the Rogue Secret game from map number one in favor of Secret. Mm -hmm. And they went on to win that matchup, but it took three maps to do it off the backs of yeah. quite the comeback on bank for uh, for Rogue. I think we could definitely see three maps here just to, you know, the way things have gone on so far, but mm -hmm. SSG have got to have a bit more confidence now. I mean, I'm sure they were somewhat confident going into this feeling very prepared. But after that map, I got to imagine they're feeling a bit more prepared because this is a very strong team they just won against. The other thing I've mentioned as well, everyone, uh, if your favorite team today ends up losing, it's not the end of the world. I know the format has been around for about a year and a half now, but some people might be a little confused as to how it works. New fans coming in with new teams and new organizations coming over. So if you lose today, you you're in a bad spot, but you're not done. Which is why all the Bolo fans should tune in tomorrow as well. Exactly. TSM lost today. Spoiler. But uh, they are not out of it. Just like if anyone here today were to uh, to lose on day number one, there is still a guaranteed day number two. Starting off on Coastline now will be this game for Group C. The Vodafone Giants against Space Station Gaming. The North American representatives, Space Station, up 1-0 in map count currently. Should we need Clubhouse? We'll head there for a decider, but that will require the Giants tearing away with Coastline. I imagine yeah. if this game is close, SSG will take it. They wow. they do love Coast quite a lot. They're going to ban the Hibana as well. That's a yeah, we saw spot. that earlier in the uh, the Rogue match. So yep, we, we saw that have a little bit of impact on Hookah, but not a huge amount. A little. It was just more just like eh, you couldn't do certain things, couldn't open certain angles, yeah. but. Not, not, not again, a huge impact, because this is a map where you don't necessarily need it. Lion being banned is uh, not, again, a huge impact as well. It's obviously some kind of target ban or just something they don't want to even chance playing against. 
Maestro going out, though, does mean either Echo or Mira will be left. Yeah, and we saw Mira banned, but both Maestro well, and Echo are available. Well, both left. On border. So, okay, let me see. We saw the Valk get banned as well earlier on Coastline, but it was with Echo rather than Maestro. So this is like mm -hmm. two out of four similar to the match we saw earlier. I'm excited to see... Uh Maybe if the Mira has more of an impact on this map than it did between Rogue and Secret, because yeah. we saw the Mira come out later on for Rogue in almost a desperate attempt to regain control of the game because they were getting yeah. flawless round at, after flawless round. <laughs> that was round, not great. So that, was, that was tough for Rogue. So no Mira being selected early on here for Space Station as they'll start on the defense. It'll be the Giant starting on the attack. And a six-pack for Aces off of the Jackal onto the Dokubi. So there we go. This is... Uh, Man line, you get Dokubi. A map, again, where you really don't need hard breachers. It's a commodity, not a necessity. And we saw a lot of flank control operators being brought by Team Secret yeah. on Coast on their attacking half. A lot of them. Huh. All of them, yeah. basically. And we're seeing r r remarkably fewer here. Yeah. Some good intel ops on defense, though, with the, the Echo, the Pulse, and the Mozzie. And of course, Captow was banned all three times in the match we casted earlier, yep. whereas it's been available both maps now. And of course, they're going to bring it. We didn't really see uh, um, always a ton of impact from him every round, but it was definitely a very good operator in the hands of Fultz, especially. Obviously, he, we'll see when they switch to attack on Space Station whether or not he's going to bring that again. But Althama definitely bringing it this round. But he's the defuse carrier, so he's definitely not going to be the most aggressive Capitao. I wonder if he's got the new skin. Maybe. I hope so. Starting off on a hookah defense for Space Station here. And we've seen a bunch of different, uh, I guess, styles of setup for this site before. Looks like Fultz is going for the I'm going to Swiss cheese the ever-living hell out of my wall beside me. Yeah, you don't know where I'm coming from. You got no clue. You got to wildly spray at it. Well, that kind of works out sometimes. <laughs> or they'll just hit it with, like, Buck or something, or, or the Ash remote breach and just blow the whole wall open hey, all of the day. You could just nade it off Rip, too, if you burn yeah. the ADSs. So there's a lot of counters to that. Um, when that style of fight really got introduced, it was quite, new, uh, quite a new... <laughs> what Corey? a start for Corey. Oh, no. He might have... Cams. Yeah, he might have yeah. even spotted him through the floor. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think Corey also destroyed his cell phone because he saw it as an electronic yeah, device. Yeah, that's true. So, well, gonna... I don't think they were going to hack that anyways. That's in bomb sight. I don't that's think you're going to go into sight and then start hacking. A man can dream, can he not? That's right. But good start. Rise is taking a bit of damage for it, but nonetheless, killing the smoke this early, that's a pretty critical play, especially on sight. Now, uh, sight should be a little bit weaker. They do still have the Echo, but still, that's, that's a great way to play it. Fortunately for Ryze, he can't really get docked up or anything on attack, but I'm sure he'll still be potentially impactful on that Ash. He did manage to pick it up a little bit on the Ash play uh, later on in Border. This is quite the roam still being brought out here from Bosco yeah. and Rampy over inside of uh, VIP and the uh, Guitar Hallway. Waiting for anyone to come up in towards the uh, the penthouse and theater side, but it seems like the Giants have no intentions of doing anything like that. It might be useful for a late flank here for Space Station. As there's about a minute remaining. Aces, though, collect one onto Rampy. So, two-man advantage now for the Giants as they start to descend onto site. So that's one of your roamers gone. You still had Bosco roaming over on this side as well as Aces is looking to clear out what's left of that roam. You can hear the phone from... Bosco ringing out inside of Hall of Fame, now into VIP, thinking Nade with one, thinking Nade with two, a beautiful peek towards the hookah balcony. There goes Corey, smoke grenades coming in, but Bosco right in behind is the peak coming up. No, he downs his own teammate, but he'll pick up the kill onto Aces to equalize at a 2v2. You still have the Yokai drones up for Chala in behind the bar. He's not using them yet. Unfortunate timing there for Rise is now Afama sticking the plant in the 1v2 in the default. He'll have to rip right back out to Aquarium to try and hold a bunker from deep out. He's going to go for the upside down repel. Bosco going to recollect his botched Nitro Cell and an Echo Drone coming in will spot him on the upside down repel. Knows he's there. All it takes is one to press and the other one to secure the kill. You need to go in for a tandem peek here. Bosco's actually going to go for the run out downstairs while Chala waits on the bomb. Making sure he's in the same position. No, Bosco's coming back upstairs. Seems like a lot of time wasted there for Space Station Gaming as they're running low. Alfama's gotten off the repel now. He's just outside the doorway. There goes the Nitro <laughs> Cell. Bosco will collect and Space Station bring back the 3v5, even with a little bit of a team kill in the mix. Yeah, Nonetheless, they persevere. That was definitely 
some good play there. It was, I feel bad for the Capitao just sitting there like, uh, how do I play this? Gets spotted in the upside down repel, decides to change angles. But I think that's part of why Bosco came back up. He acted like he was going to go for the run out to really kind of uh, make him switch positions and be off the repel. In doing so, once he got off the repel, Bosco was like, okay, now I'll come back up and go for that C4. And it worked. Good communication, good teamwork and play there. It was unfortunate they let the, the Diffuse get even planted in the first place, but poor Alfama left all alone, could not clutch it out, and a good start despite uh, the early kill on default. That was definitely a good play by Corey. Just did not turn into enough. Kitchen is where they're going to go for the second defense here. So, interesting. It's hard not to feel like that one really slipped to the fingers there, the Giants. Yeah. They were in early control. Like you said, they got that early pick on default to the smoke in, what, 25 I think they followed up seconds. with a second kill, too, pretty they quickly. Did. They had the 5v3 advantage there. Thinking Nade, though, definitely helped turn that around a lot, and then followed Absolutely. up by Bosco, for sure. It was a good recovery there for Space Station after letting things slip away a little bit, but man, the Giants looked like they were in the driver's seat on that one, and it just it turned off a cliff real hard. <laughs> yeah. So for them, in this one, I guess it's, it's recuperating again, and this has kind of been the story for the Giants on land and a lot of events is they start off hot in rounds. You know, you can even think back to the Six Invitational in their group stage game against Evil Geniuses, where they were up, what, 5-0 on Villa and EG come back for the comeback. You know, there's, yeah. there's moments like that and there's games like that in the Giants history where it looks like they should have had the game. At a lot of LAN events, there's a lot of games where it looks like they should have had it. I mean, even in their game against uh, FaZe at, uh, at Milan, it looked like they had a few rounds there where it could have been theirs. Yeah. And it just kind of slipped through the fingers. And it's, it's hard not to think that's a little reminiscent of what we've seen from them in the past. And, and Border, I think, went back and forth. I think, honestly, it was Space Station that could have been further in control on Border. But so far to the start here for Coastline, it looked wonderful for the Giants, but Charl is going to continue wow. to buoy the momentum on the side of Space Station and tie a boat anchor to the momentum on the side of the Giants. Rise has just been really a mixed bag on that Ash play. I'm not sure that that's the best play because there, as I was talking about earlier, there's so many different attack operators with so many different useful utilities that just continuing to run Ash, you're not just, you're not getting a ton of mileage out of. They're also not bringing the Dokumi this time. I would almost say, Put Rise on Nomad, because Nomad's got a pretty good gun as well, and you're going to be the, the ability to control the flank operators. We saw Thinking Nade's flank, for example, how much work that did. You could have had an air jab on those stairs, for example, after you took control from killing Foltz. So, Ooh, definitely something they could be taking advantage of. This is a good bait here, although Aces will drone it out. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Just making waiting. sure he did catch that. So yeah. the Jackal tracks are coming out on T'Challa in behind the Lamborghini desk, but Bosco was playing at the base of the theater stairs, trying to bait aces out for the peak, and T'Challa was more than content to sit behind the desk in safety, waiting for the yeah. peak to come, and knowing he had support. Now Bosco's gone all the way upstairs. Jackal Pings will come out what a, once again on T'Challa behind the front desk, and 75 seconds tick down on the clock here for the Giants to make a move, yet they stand rather stagnant so far. Yeah, Aces is not really doing a whole lot for his team right now, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, he's trying to lock down Chala, but as an attacker, you need to be doing more than just locking down a single defender. Oh. Slowly creeping his way through there, and Hicks will take down Rampy off screen. Charlotte well aware of his position being a vulnerability, and as he turns back into the bathroom, he'll take a little bit of damage to the backside off that C70. Alfama will take down Bosco, the roamer upstairs, but he's got no idea that Charlotte's inside his bathroom door. A good trade back there for Charlotte. Two in the round for him. Prone angle here for Hicks onto Charlotte, but he can't land a lethal shot. Charlotte have to juice him back up on the repeak. Faults will drop Alfama as well. It's a beautiful round here so far for Space Station as the Toxic Babes will come out and slow down any end entrance in thinking nade once again from up above the smg 11 raining down hell and there goes faults corey to fall and the giants losing consecutive rounds on their last possible stand on the map bosco even hitting him with some respect saying we know what we're going up against but man yeah. ssg once again what i don't understand is how did aces not know chala was there when he went prone and stuck his leg out into the doorway and he saw it. He was so concerned with someone else peeking him from that further doorway, he just ignored the, the, the information he already had. And it cost him his life. And a lot of time spent hunting Chala too. And I'm sorry, but hunting the dock, not always the most effective thing, because if you don't finish the kill, 
He just juices himself right back up, and that's exactly what he did. That was a good round for Chala, but interestingly enough, Bosco is going to take up the Doc Mantle instead. Chala going to be on Jaeger. It's an interesting choice. I mean, Rampy is definitely uh, on Castle is a pretty good choice. He's been a very good Castle so far this season. I think because Chala has been on this team for so long in a support role, people forget his days of fragging. Well, yeah. Because he used to be an entry fragger for the team. So Dark Zero, but before they were known as Dark Zero back when they were flip side. I, I love the storied history of this game. It's like, it's a technically a young game in terms of number of years, but so many people go back to the beginning. I mean, I feel bad for people trying to just get into Pro League now just because you're up against people who've been doing this since the beginning of Pro League or very early on. It's a, it's a tough hill to climb, but you still have people that are able to do it. I mean, you look at someone like Bolo that was just too young to play for so long. Bided his time, and here he is. You also look at Challenger League coming up for uh, this season, season 10 of Challenger League in North America. You have yeah. leftovers. There's a lot almost. of spots open. There is. A team of almost all pros on the team of leftovers in North yeah. America. You also have Secret in EU. You know, this is not going to be... You also have Forza in EU. So yeah. there is no easy road to Pro League anymore. And well. It just gets more difficult as the season goes on. Charla does not have any attachments on the 416. That is... Because uh, he never plays Jaeger. That's what I'm telling you. It's a weird choice. I don't, yeah, I don't think he set that up. I hope he's at least putting his ADSs up correctly. And I imagine probably barbed wire. You know, all right, Rice. You can hope. Well, there we go. Made me a believer. I was hoping he was going to do something useful with Ash this round. That was it. Taking down Rampy. Good kill. I mean, yes, it was the castle who's probably already done his work, but Rampy's a gunner. Taking him down, definitely helpful. Looks like Thinking Day is going to get droned out of the top of Cool Vibe stairs as well. This castle and deployable shield. I like this. Causing some trepidation here for Hicks, but there's no one within a country mile to try and play yeah. it. So he's just playing it safe for now, waiting for someone to come in and support. And is that a pre-placed Nitro? No, that is a goo mine on the floor. It's My apologies. not there anymore. Nope. The IQ doing a lot of work there with Corey as well with the uh, electronic sensor, making sure they're not getting caught off guard by anything else. And this collapse towards the top of Cool Vibe stairs has been pretty successful so far. Not sure what Rise is pre-firing in at. The, uh, here we go. The Tron will confirm there's no one in there. Seems like there's a lot of mixed signals coming out for the Giants, but they'll grab a two-man lead momentarily before Ace is traded out by Bosco. So as he puts up that dock, he gets a kill for his troubles, and Fultz playing the base of Cool Vibe stairs will be droned out now. Pushing up the stairs with a shotgun in hand. That could be a quite favorable position to be in for Fultz, but you probably don't want to swing too far out and possibly lose that engagement and leave your team in a two-man deficit for the rest of the round. So far, they've not done a great job of keeping that top floor controller delaying for a long period of time. But on the plus side, Space Station aren't losing any more people once that top floor control was taken. But they're, I don't know, they're just not in a great position to retake a lot. It's just a lot of control being given out here to Vodafone Giants, but they're also stalling out. They've got that Nomad now and an air jab in the pocket. But again, this stalling out is just giving a chance for SSG to reposition and get themselves in a more advantageous position. And Bosco uses that to take Corey out. And you see the low health as well from, well, this is, I'm sorry, just about over for Vodafone Giants now. Yeah, Hicks, last man standing. That smoke will start choking him out and have to retreat back up the Cool Vibe stairs. Not a lot of time remaining. Fultz is going to press the issue momentarily. He's going to fall back now, knowing that that's probably the smart decision. Don't leave Bosco alone in a 1v1 if you can help it. And still looking down the kill holes, but Fultz not in a vulnerable position, playing underneath the stairs. No diffuser control. Hicks trying to take a vacation to Narnia, I guess. He's going to drop down into Courtyard, and that's going to be an easy lock down there for Bosco. Space Station Gaming on a ride halfway to the Solar System exit. They're up 3-0 now on Coastline. They're looking to take this one all the way to the moon. It's looking very good so far. And it's funny because we saw uh, such an attack-favored Coastline earlier from Team Secret especially. But this is looking very defensive-sided at the moment. We had, uh, for example, the, the first three rounds were flawless attack rounds from Secret, but now we've got not flawless, but very effective first three defense rounds from SSG. Looking pretty good here so far. They've done the tour of their three sites. Now they get to go back to Hookah. But even in situations where uh, Vodafone Giants have the advantage, like you were hinting at earlier, the Vodafone Giants tending to throw away their advantages, it seems. They're just stalling out. They're lacking confidence. They're just not having a lot of good intel, maybe, on uh, the defenders of SSG, but they're also not capitalizing on static defenders in positions where they're just not really doing a lot to get out of position. They're bringing both the Nomad and the Dokumi this time, as well as the IQ to try and get some info and control roamers. It's just nothing they're doing is really working all that well. 
It helps that people like Chala and Bosco definitely showing up, though. And Chala, like you said, uh, you know, not necessarily known as a gunner, but definitely used to be, and has absolutely been showing up on this map, especially doing some work for his team. Bosco also showing up. I think uh, everyone's really had a chance to shine. I, I think the only one that really hasn't shown up as much as I would have expected it is Rampy. And, uh, you know, there's, there's still plenty of time. This was this is the map where Rampy set the new record for kills in Pro League. So, definitely possible. Thinking Nay back on the Jaeger, taking that one away from Chala as he didn't have any attachments on. He's going for a spawn peek. And it didn't really work. <laughs> But it's still applying pressure up 3-0 and not laying off the gas pedal anytime soon will be Space Station. Four more rounds to lock this one up and move on to a date with evil geniuses, their North American counterparts. Whoever does end up losing this will also have a date with ninjas in pajamas, so that's not an easy matchup, and that's what we yeah. say group of death. It's a very, very stacked group here in Raleigh for Group C. So. Rise entering down below inside of Blue Bar Solo, but he does have a lot of drones with him for the intel. Like yeah. you've been saying, Rise has been I guess, pretty hit or miss on the the entry with Ash so far. Chala, no fear. In and out around the pool table. They haven't even opened up the pool table wall oh. or window and looking up through their own kill holes. Will be Rise trying to find a pick onto Chala as he continues to move around like he's got ants in his pants. He's feeling confident after those four kills. Why wouldn't you? Corey trying to make use of his scanner again. Actually, he's going to get caught out here. Does get pushed away, but no damage done, at least to anyone so far. And it's almost a minute and a half into the round already. Yeah, it looked like uh, Corey was going for that same pick that he got earlier on to Fultz while Fultz was on cams. And uh, Fultz the wiser this time around. Not going to yeah. get caught off guard for two rounds in a row off of that one. Again, with the VIP and uh, Hall of Fame roam here, single entry coming out from this is Aces and the Dokubi. Going to send out the phone calls again. And you can hear these phones ring out in extremely close range. Go for the pre fires with the CZ, but nothing will connect. He's just wasting a lot of time here. Outside, a Nitro Cell goes soaring out the window. It won't connect. One shot, and finally the headshot for Rise. He's able to down Rampy through the wall as well, and VIP looking to spray wildly and clean that one up. It's double now for Rise on the Ash. So they clear out the roam. That was really their downfall last time. They'll hack the cameras as well. Probably just a bulletproof and some defaults. Maybe a drone will be remaining for uh, for the Giants to collect intel off of, off of the hack. But outside of that, this is a beautiful aquarium push about to be executed. Yeah, so far they haven't taken any damage, and that's thanks to Rise with a great push. Nice catch on that air jab, though. But uh, yeah, this definitely, though, low on time is the big deal here. Rise still needs to continue to be effective. That flashbang does push him away, but now they know. Now they've got to take control of that 90 push onto this, but they're losing time. Chala actually pushing back as well. Chala is on one right now. He's feeling it and pushing in through the hookah balcony door. Fultz will stop that point blank. It's a flurry of kills, leaving Fultz in a 1v2. This plant still needs to go down, choking on the smoke momentarily. It was Alfama. They're going back and forth right now. Fultz pressed right up against the balcony door. Doesn't really have a lot of places he can play safely. No hole in the wall there, and a smoke will come out onto the wall. That will penetrate, but good reposition there from Alfama. All Fultz has to do is push through the rotate. He has clear coverage, but he's going to go hallway instead. All the way at the depths of VIP doorway will be aces on the coverage. And now a smoke grenade will come out once again, start choking out Alfama on the push. Fultz with one. He's got it down to the 1v1 he needs, but he does not have the health advantage in comparison to aces. Laying prone at the planter, he crosses the hole. He can make it in towards the diffuser. Most likely <laughs> air jabbed. He got air jabbed in the middle of the rotate there as he vaults over and he hits a second one now. Getting closer and closer to that diffuser but losing time. No more Toxic Babes left in the arsenal and he's inching closer and closer to try and long arm this. Ace is not moving just yet and now Fultz will pull off. Spraying down the hallway but Ace is on the clutch. Beautiful poise from the Belgian. And that'll be Vodafone Giants taking their first round on Coastline. And a close one at that. Fultz actually almost clutched that out. Had to get air jabbed twice and still almost pulled it off. He knew he was going to get pressed right there, too. It's just, like you said, the health disadvantage definitely not working out in his favor. And honestly, had he had full health, it's possible he might have been able to win that. All it really took was one shot to the backside as he tried to retreat, and it yeah. was over for Fultz. And beautiful isolation on the two targets there. Honestly, I think if Fultz gets the call that uh, Aces is going for coverage from the VIP door, down the hallway, I think Fultz goes for the peek onto the guy planting onto Alfama, but I don't think the call was there on the side of Space Station, so he never yeah. knew he was free to push in.
No, it was definitely down, down to some lack of communication. It doesn't help when cams get hacked either, and all of a sudden you can't trust them, and you might need to be, even take out some of your own. But at the same time, like, that got way closer than it should have given Rises two early kills. There was definitely some really good trades from SSG towards the end of that round when the push was starting to happen, and obviously some good plays from Fultz as well, but... Hey, it was around for the Giants at the end of the day, but I gotta, again, credit Rise to that for uh, those opening two kills definitely working out. But like I said, he's been hot and cold. He's had rounds where he's been super impactful and rounds where he just gets shut down early. So I think he's just going to keep sticking to it for now as uh, this is the second to last attack round they'll have. It's also a bit of the inverse of what we saw between Rogue and Secret. Secret yeah. started on the attack and they won three in a row and Space Station started on the defense and they win three in a row and then yeah. the team that had lost three in a row bounces back with one. <laughs> Unfortunately for Rogue, they couldn't follow that up with another one. No, that was so definitely a problem. The gap continued to widen. And for the Giants here, obviously, you don't want that gap to widen back to three rounds. You don't want to be heading in with your maximum uh, scoreline being two victorious rounds in your attack heading into the half. So for the Giants here, again, replicate a little bit of what you're seeing last time. Make sure you're, you're playing off the mistakes that Space Station are making. And make sure you're remembering where the setup was. We're going back to Kitchen here, which is a setup that Space Station brought earlier on in the game, and there was a lot of top control that Space Station retook after the Giants pushed topside. SSG, again, you know, they're very fluid, very fluid on their roam, and it doesn't take a whole lot for them to, to find a hole and really make you pay for it. Yeah, and then, again, even with the Nomad, they're not really doing a ton to control the roamers. Also, you saw, for example, Ace is burning out his two Logic Bomb calls early into the round before they could be super effective. Obviously, would help towards the end of the round. Oh, nice denial here from Rampy in terms of denying this drone. Again, we haven't seen Rampy do a ton of work yet, and I feel like if he comes alive, it's over for the Vodafone Giants because he can be a serious beast for his team. Just maybe hasn't had the opportunity yet, but Rise getting stalled out a bit here, but here comes the aggression, thanks to some help from Alfama. Trying to start to push towards this. They are taking control of theater very quickly, but there's Rampy. First kill on Rise, nicely done. And missed shots from Aces here. That's a bad look there for Aces as Bosco. Oh, he's gonna open up a hole in the floor to try and dock him Crawl to the floor. me. Oh, he's still having an attacker oh. outside the door and thinking that he's gonna shut him down with the shotgun point. Blank, there he's able go. to dock him up through the floor, so still a man standing inside a theater, thinking they will fall on the trade, but Bosco's right back and standing, and will do battle with Corey momentarily. Both remaining attackers pressing in, but Bosco claims one onto Alfama. The ping's coming out, pistol in hand in desperation, hitting an air trap on the retreat, the hip fire from Corey, successful, as he whips up the Beretta as he's got nothing left in the para. He'll hit the reload as he recovers the diffuser, but he's got three left to find. This looks like a space station once again in the cockpit, ready to soar off to higher depth. Yeah, and he's not even on the same floor as the bomb right now. That is not good. He's got some time, but against three and the dock to make sure that they were all juiced up, this is not good. Also, there is going to be, I imagine, some smoke canisters left. Potentially a C4 in Rampy's pocket. Corey does have his crossbow bolts left, but he's up against a big battle here. Two stim pistols left as well as those two smokes. And he's going to send in some of those asphyxiating bolts, but Foltz will continue to smoke them out. Now trying to play with these prone holes made. Foltz knowing exactly where Corey is playing. The pre-fires won't land, but here comes Rampy around the corner, darting back and forth, just killing some time. And he'll hold his position. A beautiful shot there from Corey onto the man playing in bathroom, which was Foltz, but Rampy on the trade immediately in Space Station. Up 4-1 on map two, already up a map. Looking to close this thing out. Corey definitely tried his best that round. But man, SSG were on it. As I was as I was talking about Rampy coming alive, he absolutely did. And then Rise was disabled once where Rise was down. Like again, they they really need that entry. They seem to lose a lot of momentum and strength when they don't have their spearhead. Hookah coming out again here instead of bar. As they did lose it and switched anyways. I think that's the play. Might as well not go on uh, your third bomb site when you don't have to here for this last round. But uh, we need to see something different here from Vodafone Giants, I think. They're not really gaining enough advantage, and when they do, they're not maintaining it. They seem to be losing way too many trade fights in terms of uh, actually pushing towards site. And again, you were talking about the roam play as well. Space Station seem to be allowed to roam very freely despite the operators being brought out from Vodafone Giants. It's just they're not controlling this map at all. And SSG seem to be very much at home in it in terms of the way they're moving around. Giants here having a lot of struggles.
just expediting anything, really. On their defense, on their attack, it's on both maps now. It's become time management is the number one issue for the yeah. Giants so far. They're just, they're constantly running into a wall of Space Station members and not knowing how to pick them apart one by one, really. They're, they're walking into crossfires. They're walking into two, three-man holds and, and getting chewed up for it. And time control, really, you gotta, you gotta credit Space Station for what they've been able to do in this game, specifically on Coastline with their time management, wasting away all yeah. of the Giants' time. It's, it's honestly, it's a sight to behold in Space Station. We saw this from them, uh, the Six Invitational as well, winning the online qualifier to make it in. Space Station got the host country invite as well for finishing Yeah, because they were second, yeah. That second was... in the online qualifier. So this is a team that hasn't qualified by either going to a minor or by making to a pro league final, and yet they still, they didn't even win the online qualifier yeah. either. And they might even be doing better than the team that did. Yep. This was, uh, the Giants obviously made it to Milan, so they had their invite locked up to make yeah. it to Raleigh. And man, Space Station again. They're a team that I think gets overshadowed by some of the other teams in North America, like Rogue and EG and Dark Zero. Yeah. Because they stay middle of the pack a lot. Their draws in Pro League in the online seasons really keep them from, from pushing towards that upper echelon. Yeah, it does, it does make them look like less of a team than they are sometimes. And I think underestimating Space Station is probably one of the worst mistakes you can make. You even saw it from Bosco in his uh, in yeah. the opening. Go video. ahead, keep sleeping on us. Keep sleeping on us and see how much it hurts you. But I also got to agree with the other thing he said about the teamwork. We've seen a lot of good teamwork from Space Station. You see how often they're they're covering for e each other and trading. You saw that that end kill, for example, the last round, they were ready to trade it, and they did exactly that. They will work together as a team, and that's why they're having a lot of crossfires set up as well. That just, like you said, the Vodafone Giants aren't able to find like a good enough weakness in to really confidently attack. Judging by that animation, it looked like Charlo was down, but he went for the self-revive. So he's back up to 75 on the swing. He has used a stim pistol, so that would make the most sense. That might have been a frag grenade coming in. There are four on the board for the Giants. Charlo not going to get the kill on there just yet. He knows someone's down there. Mm -hmm. It's probably yeah. the guy who naded him. <laughs> yeah, he's going to juice himself up a little bit extra just to make sure he can win this fight against Alfama, who's given his position away. But he's afraid of a pitch from behind more so than the attack from the front. Which, you know, you've got Rampy there to cover for you, plus the coverage on the stairs from Thinking Nate. I don't think you need to watch that direction. Just watch Aqua. There's not a whole lot of utility being baited out here. Fold still has all of his toxic canisters. You have a Nitro Cell in the back pocket for Rampy. You got a bunch of Leisure Mines placed around the objective as well for Bosco. I mean, this is this is a dream right now for Space Station. Other than the fact that you just lost Fultz, there goes your smoke once again. Early deaths here for Fultz could be the demise for Space Station, but Ace is on extremely low HP. We'll hit a Legion Mine. Hicks down downstairs as Alfama's going in for the plant. And yeah, no one's going to be even remotely close to try and revive him. The Nitro Cell comes out and will stop the plant dead in its tracks. Alfama to the grave. And now Rampy and Charla pressing up onto the bomb, trying to stall out any more attempts. 20 seconds tick away against the Giants, and Rise now carrying the Diffuser, going for a rotation himself by Luggage. Corey holding the cool vibe stairs. They need to get this plant going down. Corey will collect the kill onto Thinking Day. Trades come out across the board, leaving it in a 3v2, but Rise has to go for the plant. Corey with another one onto Bosco. Charla swinging wildly, but he cannot get them all. And the Giants will persevere and at least salvage the first half, only down 4-2. Corey saved that round for them. They yeah. were falling apart so fast. And Corey just braving it right through the, the goo mines. He doesn't care. He's pushing up on him. Did eventually get killed, but too little too late for SSG to stop it. But that really should have gone SSG's way just based off the way the gunfights were going and the lack of time. If Corey hadn't pushed as aggressively as he had and actually succeeded in it, that definitely would have gone just on time alone. As you said, time management being a real struggle for Vodafone Giants. So uh, they're going to... Oh, I thought they were going to go with the, the Clash to really slow down SSG as well. But we'll see how things go on the flip side here. 4-2 for SSG. Could have been a 5-1. But either way, that was definitely the driver's seat for SSG. But now that sides have switched, that could also switch as well. Definitely see, I could see an overtime happening here if Vodafone Giants can get their act together. That was a good round to start with, too, that carries momentum into the half for you. You know, like it gives you a bit of a mental reset. Like, yes, we have a hill to climb, but at the same time, we're still in this game. It's not completely out of reach. It's only a two round deficit. You win this, you're back within one. We've seen that so many times today. A 4 2 yeah. split that feels monumental until that first round of the second half. Take it one round at a time. It's a 4 3 game, and you're right back in it. So, yeah. the Giants here again, not allowing things to get out of hand. This is. Uh, 
This is looking good for the for Space Station gaming, though. I must say, Space yeah. Station on a different level than I think we've really seen from them in a while. And that's after a 7-4 in the last map. Yes. They were looking good on border. They still look good here on coastline. They're still in command of this entire series, no matter what, after winning border. And for Space Station fans out there, rejoice, because this is the Space Station that you love to see. Blasting off. Well, we'll see how they do now on their attacks, though. These attacks can definitely be struggle for some teams in terms of uh, just not having a good enough idea how to actually press your attack once you get into the building. Not having enough intel, they're going to have both a mute and a mozzie, so that will definitely slow things down. They do have the IQ at least to counter the echo, and then of course the uh, jackal to be able to try and stop some of those roam plays. So, but good utility on both sides to be able to fight this out. And I got to imagine they were anticipating Hookah as the first bomb site. It is kind of become the primary for a lot of teams now. It's it's interesting how the primary on this map has switched around. It used to be a penthouse, then it was kitchen, yep. then it was Hookah. It's and I mean remember when Hookah used to be the worst bomb site? Yeah, no one would ever come here as a bomb site. It was like a ranked bomb site only. Yeah, and then uh, as soon as you uh, give it a little bit of time and, and purple tarps. Oh, the bloody purple tarp! <laughs> Will we ever see the true death? of this blast position. I Someday. Just leave it be. <laughs> Someday, the answer is just going to be to delete. Alfama's like, could it be today? <laughs> you see, yeah, he's in the middle of a lot of trouble here. There's no dock on the side of the Giants either, and Chao will collect a kill onto Alfama. So there goes your Mozzie. There goes one of your Nitro Cells. You only got one left in the back pocket of Aces, and you've got some downstairs control now for Bosco and Fultz to work with. But it's a minute and a half into the round. Yep. So there is that. Ooh, and Corey's on a bit of a flank through Kitchen. Not sure if anyone on SSG is aware of this. Fultz's drone might miss this as well. This could be prime time for Corey. Oh, uh, he might have got pinged by the Jackal Track. I'm not sure who that was the ping on. There he goes, Corey. Ah, he gets one, but Bosco able to trade that right back. So Corey will fall. Another Jackal Track onto the mute now. That's Aces upstairs. And no, oh, that's the rotation into Courtyard. Bosco holding this, awaiting the entry. Hicks will take down Bosco, though. Man that was waiting at the bottom of the stairs. So a good pinch there from Hicks and Aces. Hitting the air jab now, but it, oh, storming through the gates is thinking Nate Chaw with another one. Aces alone now. Shotgun in hand, but Space Station extend the lead. 5 2 now. Two more rounds to set them up with a date with the Evil Geniuses. What a slugfest that was between these two teams, especially around the cool vibe stairs. Both teams seemingly get intel and call outs, pings from the Jackal, air jabs going off. Both teams kind of knew what was going on in terms of round them, but both of them catching each other on surprises, flanks, things like that, like the flank on Bosco, for example. They just couldn't seem to ever really have an advantage. It was just too chaotic for either of the teams to really act accurately on the intel they kept getting. I got to imagine comms were probably a bit chaotic as well for both teams, and it was just it almost down to who had the better reflexes and won their gunfights or was able to catch uh, other players on surprise, uh, you know, surprised. There was a Mira tease for a second. We're just not seeing Mira play despite being unbanned. They're even going to six pick off of it. So it's a, I don't know, maybe they're saving it for Penthouse. We did see it used for Kitchen as well from uh, Rogue earlier. But it's, it's interesting. See, I mean, I got to imagine they thought maybe it would be banned and they don't have strats for it, or they're just like, we don't need it. We have uh, Echo, we're going to take full advantage of him. A lot of good intel on the attack side. They've got those air jabs, they've got the Capital, they've got the IQ. Plenty of work they can be doing. They're not going to go with the Dokubi like we saw from uh, Butterfone Giants, but... I found it interesting as well as a map that used to be dominated by Mira and a competitive scene as a whole that used to be dominated by Mira, even when she's left unbanned. Not necessarily just in this game, yeah. even though she has been left unbanned in this map. Well, that's the thing is, is I was talking about this one when the, the bans first came in. Mm -hmm. It was all Mira all the time. And, I, and the nice thing about that was people then learned to play without it. Yep. And, the nice, and then that leaves a permanent effect. So that when it's unbanned, teams like don't bother. We, we already have strats without it. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the permanent bans can be useful like that, but at the same time, I would like to see uh, Echo Mirror Freed from Ban Jail. Yeah. That would be nice. Well, Space Station, you're starting off over towards Penthouse and Theater right now. Randy's out on the VIP balcony. Boss is going to drop into the Penthouse bathroom as well. Ace is down below, has a Nitro Cell. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get a call for a ping. 
try and take down Rampy. He's currently on an indestructible floor, but you never know. Chala will repel up and join him on the Capital with the Diffuser as well. Heard someone rip a Nitro and put it back in the back pocket. I think that was Aces. This, this is a large amassment of Space Station bodies now towards Penthouse. Looking over towards the theater side, it looks like it was Corey playing the top of theater stairs as well. Trying to shut this down, but he's one man against five, and Corey's actually gone back downstairs to help with the roam over towards Kitchen. So, at this point, you've given up top floor if you're the Giants, and this should be free. But the Giants are, like, everywhere on the bottom floor right now. Yeah. They're barely even on site at this point. Spread out entirely. This Echo Drone not being spotted here by, uh, by the Twitch of Rampy. Providing a pretty good call. I'm not sure if Hicks is going to swing on this. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it real hard. <laughs> but no, even with the intel, he's not going to Just go cocks the shotgun as a threat. Yep. I like that they at least able to hold this intel, though. It's good on them. Hicks just knowing exactly when to pressure. Good communication unless they get off it. There's the shock drone taken out now, though. But he is getting jackal tracked. So a lot of pressure and counter pressure here. He's got Alfalm with help cover him on the drone as well as with his own gun on the angle. Thinking Nate, though, might actually go to press it here. Oh, doesn't realize how close he came to dying right there. But in the meantime, Chala does take down aces, and that's mute gone. This is problematic. This is a lot of real estate upstairs surrendered by the Giants early, and Space Station taking full advantage with the soft destruction. They have a lot of breaching charges with this lineup, and Hicks is going to smoke out cool vibes there as he gets Jackal Jack at the base again. Constantly being revealed his position. 35 seconds left. It's going to take a bit of a flurry here on the collapse from Space Station to get this plant down, if at all. Corey will trade one back onto Chalice. There goes the man carrying the diffuser and your smokes, at least in the smoke bolts. You still have Bosco with two in the back pocket, should he need him. Rise playing the window as well, waiting for another peek to come in. Outside of that sunrise window, the plant going down from Fultzo as he falls straight on in. Hicks will take down Bosco, thinking made next to fall. It's a furious volley here for the Giants, and Rampy will at least trade one back, but with no time remaining, pushing from Kitchen. Takes a lot of damage, and Alfama on a huge round for him. I believe that was three or four for the Echo on that one, and the Giants, again, stave off elimination point here, at least down to the loser's bracket. I mean, they gave up the top floor control, but with how spread out they were and how much they were able to delay, it really actually backfired against SSG because they had to wait till the last second to press because they were hoping to get a whole bunch of free picks with that top floor control but because Photophone Giants weren't giving it up. Just even that play back and forth on the cool vibe stairs was really just burning time. Yeah, they were jackal tracking the mute, but it took or the, the smoke, but it took them so long to execute on it that it didn't really matter at the end of the day. Jackal tracking, all it did was stop him from pushing. But good coordination with Alfalma, who also got the kills, but also was using his Echo Drones to be able to spot players out as often as possible. And I think that was part of what kept them from getting picked off early was the additional intel that they had. So they didn't put themselves in positions where they were easy bait. But, uh, you know, that's only one round, and they are still very close to map and match point here. SSG just need one more round to put that pressure on. And we are going to go to Kitchen now, I believe. And again, they are going to bring the mirror this time, though, because Kitchen works much better when you can watch delivery and see when they're trying to bring a package over. It's pretty beneficial to have that. Oh, my. What? That better just be a reinforcement and not. Because that's a pretty typical reinforcement. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I was You're expecting say, a window put like. Put the nope. kegs mirror. Put yeah. the kegs mirror facing Lambo, please. For. For the love that all is holy in this world, Alfama, please do not put that mirror facing the bathroom door. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Looks like he's going to set up the one that you mentioned. Yeah. And then I imagine, okay, the other ones are already set up in kitchen, facing towards delivery. The essential ones are there. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it does, he gets slaughtered, thinking he's still in setup mode, and he gets torn down. Bosco with a very swift entry into Sunrise. Let's identify Hicks on the pulse. And here comes Corey doing battle with Rampy. None of these shots able to land and do damage. But Rise able to trade out Bosco inside of Sunrise as he makes his way into Courtyard. So good bounce back there for the Giants. Oh my, Rampy's on the other side of that soft wall inside of Blue Bar from, uh, from Rise. And yet no one trying to go for the swing. And Rise is going to make it all the way back to the objective now. So the drone in sight will confirm that from Rampy. And... The press on from Sunrise will continue here for Space Station. I wonder if that Twitch drone has popped any of the windows yet either. Because that could be a big uh, bit of pressure on the defenders if those windows get popped. Doesn't look like so it. So it looks like, uh, no, and... Oh, one's open, yep. Okay, there we go. So the one facing service is open, the one facing Lambo has not been opened up. That's the more important one that they got taken out. 
That might have also just been a, a self pop, like the team could have popped themselves Absolutely because of the reverse push coming yeah. up from Sunrise. Definitely could be. Unfortunately, you can't undo that once you do it, so. Mm -hmm. Can't really duct tape it back together. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh. Roll out some Saran Wrap that's somehow black on one side. Yeah. Looks like Ace is up top as well, going to do some reconstruction from inside of VIP as Rise will take down Faults. So there goes your Nomad and your Jackal. Those are some pretty good roam clearing operators. Not a lot of roaming left to be done here for the Giants. Just a lot of sight play. It's really just Aces upstairs right now. He's going to have a, uh, a free world to play with, honestly. No one from Space Station going up to contest with any of the top hold here. And Hicks doing a lot of damage onto Rampy down to about one HP, and he'll finally collect as the Twitch walks dead into his sights. And it's all a line up here. The Giants again storming their way through the ladder portal of these rounds. It's tidal waves of kills coming out for the Giants. No inch back in within one round now. Yeah. It's a 5-4 game after being on the precipice of being sent immediately down to the loser's bracket almost identically to their run at the Six Invitational. Yeah, definitely seeming like defense is the way to go on coastline for these two teams, but it's, it's just we're seeing kind of the reverse of what we saw uh, on the Vodafone Giants attacks where the defense is really coordinating very well to work together and actually having better intel it seems on the attackers than the attackers have on them and they're ready for it they're actually able to get a lot of good shots and uh, just really denying entry into a lot of rooms although Bosco did a great job with that initial entry and the pick onto the mirror that was a good start but much like a lot of the Vodafone's Giants rounds could not follow that up with a ton able to get picked off by that lesion from the courtyard definitely did not help they did at least have some air jabs set up, but weren't really able to finish. Had that kill been finished onto security as well, that might have helped things out a little bit. Chala, though, doing some work. Him and Bosco definitely showing up on this map. Corey and Rise as well. Fama picking it up too. And just, well, pretty much everyone on Vodafone Giants did a pretty good job. But this is still getting very close to a possible overtime if SSG can't pick themselves out of the slump. But I think they have a tactical timeout left. If it goes to a 5 5. They should probably use it. See what they can do to change things up a little bit. Yeah, like I said, I think a lot of people overlook Charles' fragging ability just because of the role he plays on Space Station. Yeah, certainly not this map. No, no, you'd be hard-pressed to be ignoring him right about now. He's been on a tear so far on Coastline, even putting in some pretty valiant work on Border as well in terms of the kill department. But he's such a versatile player and such a... Honestly, fluid player. Like he, he has no one specific role. He can be a fragger. He's played a fragger in Pro League. He can be a support. He can run flex. Doesn't really matter uh, what kind of role that Chala's playing. And honestly, you need that on a team like Space Station that has a lot of flexible players. And as long as you can keep rotating that carousel and make sure that no matter what, if someone's having a bad day on a certain op, yeah. you can rotate another person in to fill that role and maybe put them further back on the field. It's it's such a luxury to have. Yeah, absolutely. And as, as much as that could be Lycan's job, he's only able to talk to the team during the tactical timeouts. Mm -hmm. That again is why maybe they need that. Alfama taking a, a big amount of damage too. It's already down pretty low. And uh, that will definitely be a bummer if he's able to capture some drones but then gets killed and not able to use them. Chow actually trying to sneak up with that drone and spot him out if he can as well. I think he was roaming on the far side towards theater where the entry is coming in from SSG and... Well, Corey going to get spotted, I think. Most likely. He's downstairs inside the office, and yeah, Charles Tron will find that one for him. And Bosco right outside the office oh. door. Hicks has a drone in there as well. Mm. A little bit of a drone battle going right? back and forth, but looks like Bosco's going to go for the entry in a moment. You probably just want the jackal tracks on Corey, just to be sure. Yeah, the door's going to get shot Ooh. straight open, and oh, Corey I like the swift over. Of that. Corey might be coming over to contend with this, and Rai's going to use a smoke grenade early inside of luggage to try and repel the entry in through luggage and aquarium here for space station is they're running a little low on time here but they've done a good job of baiting out a lot of utility and dealing some pretty good damage rise is about 60 off almost like 10 and they know that Corey was downstairs playing the 416 through kill holes so this is a good uh, intel gathering portion of the round for space station they just need to again collapse on the site execute yeah already setting up to get the push going they do have the smoke from both the jackal and the capped out to make that work but there's still C4 as well left from both the, uh, I imagine probably the Mute, but also the Mozzie. So some good work to come out here. And the Echo just pushing up. Foltz gets one onto the trade for Corey and a second. So the kill on the Chala so far the only advantage that they had and starting to lose it now. 
plan about to be going in here for thinking aid inside of default launching out the stuns try and burn ads his aces though will equalize onto faults now so there goes the nomad and he's gonna pull off the plant off of the nitro cell and another one for aces once again the giants refuse to quit it's again four rounds in the span of about five seconds at the end of a round and the giants bring it all the way back from down five two three in a row to tie us up here heading into round 11. It seems like towards the execute portion of the round that uh, they just cannot start to find the kills. They're, like, they're almost going hunting too much towards the end rather than pushing for an execute. Tactical timeout coming out from SSG, as I was saying. If it gets to that 5-5, five, five, you got to call that, and that's exactly what happened. Like in being like, all right, let's stop this bleeding. Let's two rounds. That's it. We're done for the day. You guys get to go back to your hotel room and relax. Just close out these last two rounds. Of course, you don't want to put it like that. You don't want to put the pressure on that. You just be like, let's close out this next round. Mm -hmm. One round at a time, as you mentioned earlier, that's how you creep your way to victory. And they had such a lead, they had a two-round lead at 5-3. Somehow managed to lose the last two rounds in a row. But that does force the sights to switch, I guess, at least. Cause, but now they can go back to uh, bar. So, I don't know, that was a pretty good one. They will be going back there. I think they're bringing the mirror this time. That's a weird choice for bar. To an extent, I mean, there's still good uses for it on to, uh, to blue things like that, but not as powerful. I, I personally don't think as uh, in kitchen or upstairs in hookah. But you never know. One of the things with the bar defense is you can use the Mira upstairs in hookah. That's very true, you can split down. it up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to use it just on site. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're gonna get back underway. It's Blue Bar, it's Sunrise Bar here for the Giants as, they, as they've begun to run the gauntlet here on defensive sites. And now Fama's going to six pick off the mirror anyway, making our whole conversation useless. I imagine. Um, you no, know, maybe he's just going through that same thought process. Well, I imagine he's also going to try and put some attachments on his Echo. That's the second time we've seen a gun without attachments. The Echo in the last round for the Giants. I forget who it was. That's the problem with six pick sometimes. Sense. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you forget you're like six pick, but you're like, oh crap, I don't have this op set up. Because uh, it doesn't import their setups from no. their home setup. You have to set them up here at the event. Yeah, everyone for like. Yes, all their names are what they will be in their Uplays for their like actual accounts, but these aren't accounts. These are just like blank accounts, and you can type in yeah, any name you want. Yeah, you just type in your name. Yeah, yeah, you just type in any name you want on the blank account. So you have to go in and set up all your stuff. And if you've ever had to redo all of your operator attachments and skins and oh, uniforms, boy. you know it can be kind of good. I know how it was, because I, I mean, that last show match that I played in, I had to do the same thing, and it was like, wow, this is a lot of work. Exactly. So a lot of players only prep the ops that they know they'll be playing, and sometimes you get a Chala on a Jaeger, or I forget who it was playing Echo yeah. last round for the Giants. You know, it's sometimes you just you get put on an op, and you say, wasn't expecting that one when yeah. I set up my crap. Before. Better than being stuck on recruit on accident or something, though. Very true. At least you bring utility to the game. So, see if SSG, now that they've had their tactical timeout, can turn things around and start to close this out because uh, they do not want this overtime. Of course, if they go to overtime, not only do they then risk the chance that they lose this map and have to play map three, but they also have to play in overtime first then. So that's not a good position to be in. If it does go to overtime, I believe the Giants will be on over on uh, defense first, which is definitely a big advantage because they can yeah. continue playing on this defense that they've been playing so well. Ooh, Ooh. Corey with the long shot there. Bosco just not not trading that out favorably. Mm -mm. So there goes your Jackal. There go two of your smokes. Still have two in the back pocket of Chala. But again, beautiful start here for the Giants. And after attack timeout, that's probably not the start you want if you're SSG. Honestly, it's not the start I'm worried about. SSG have had some great starts that they end up losing, just like Vodafone Giants. It's more the middle of the round. That's where you start to get concerned. Bosco dying early definitely hurts because now it gives them a lot more ability to rotate around uh, because they're not being tracked. But at the same time, the air jabs are going to deny some of that rotation. So it's not going to be really terrible, but it's certainly not great either. Mm-hmm. Volts has made it in upstairs as well. As you can see, a lot of the members for Space Station Gaming were upstairs over towards theater and working their way down luggage. Is trying to push across towards Aquarium to get that control as well. It's a lot of top control once again surrendered, but not a lot of utilization of that for Space Station thus far. The Giants still holding Pat, and it's been a deceptively quick round thus far. A minute remaining in the round, and we send out a 5v4 in favor of the Giants, a much more favorable position than the last time they defended this site. Yeah, that early pick on Bosco obviously does force them to play a little bit more slowly, which just plays even more into the way the Vodafone Giants are playing it. 
Now, there needs to be some picks coming out from SSG. And much like we saw before, it's just the top-down control isn't lending itself to a lot of picks against Vodafone Giants because they just don't put themselves in positions where that top-down control works against them. And then just too much dependency on that from SSG works against them. The run out here from Corey. You know what? He already had a good pick early on. If he doesn't make that work, it's fine. But Plant going down almost successfully. Uh, it's interrupted by the Echo Drones here now, thinking he's going to have to go searching for that. Fultz looks like to kill onto Hicks. So there goes your smoke, and a second one from Fultz as he dives out the window. The plant is successful as the Echo had fallen. Alfama now at the hands of Rampy. It's a 4v2 now. Brought back. Oh, a beautiful shot there from Rise. He turns the corner, another one! Rise storming his way to the Diffuser, but cut short just narrowly by Thinking Nade. Now the 1v2 for Aces as he rips right in towards the Sunrise entrance, awaiting for a member of Space Station to be outside the windows. Rampy will jump down to join Thinking Nade as they're just outside the door from one another. It looks like it's going to be a swing from Aces as he runs outside, but Thinking Nade will shut it down. Space Station with the clutch up there at a short man deficit, and they still get the plant down in the midst of the Echo Drones and the Toxic Babes. And the Giants now put on loser bracket point. They stand on the brink of elimination. Like I said, it's not that early pick I was worried about. <laughs> yep. It definitely <laughs> seems like the early picks aren't really having that big of an impact on the end of the round, other than time. But getting that plant down, that was really well done. I like, I like Corey's ballsy play to run to the window, but Fultz was totally on top of that. So it is uh, unfortunate that didn't work out. But, you know, I appreciate the uh, the bravery and trying to be the hero there and save the day and stop the plant. Fortunately, even the Echo couldn't. And that's where it's really problematic is when you're, even your Echo can't stop the plant. But uh, good try. However, it's now match and map point. Momentum could be swinging the other way around. So maybe that break, that uh, tactical timeout, did work for SSG. They seem to be in much better form that round at least. But Corey and Rise have definitely been doing so much work. The team, pretty even across the board for SSG. Except for, like I said, Rampy. Uh, just let's have Rampy go ahead and just come alive this round. I mean, again, he was 0-4 at one point, so he's definitely woken up more than oh, yeah. the first half of the game. Well, let's just let's just see the super Rampy mode. True. So they're going to close it out. Let's see the Rampy that set the kill record on this map and still ended in a draw. Right? <laughs> The, the most impactful kills ever. Yes. A whole whopping 22 of them. Yeah. Certainly not seen that today. And honestly, I'm, I'm happy to see that. We haven't really had a game where there's been someone really standing out so far, at least for the games that we've casted. There have been other games. Um, I know that Uno went the hell off in the G2 Cyclops game, but that was also a very one-sided game. That's true. Um, we also had like extremely lopsided scores in the EG versus NIP game, Canadian and NVK. Yeah, he, both, they were both gone off, yeah. Both having some fun, but in the games that we've casted, it's been a very even scoreboard. Everyone really putting in an equivalent amount of work, and at least in terms of the, the kills and deaths department, there's obviously much more to the game than that, but... Yeah. It's always an early indicator and an easy indicator to read. And it looks like Rampy is reading Corey's rotation rather beautifully. Oh, got to take out Corey early. Unfortunately, that's going to give away the position. That's going to give Corey the opportunity to change positions. But they keep using this to try and lock him out with the air jabs. And uh, that doesn't seem to have a huge impact. We've heard so many air jabs go off and not lead to deaths. So many people used to be so scared of Nomad, but it doesn't seem like it's having a huge impact. However, Rampy's gun will. There you go. I called it. Rampy, it's time to come alive. Wake up. And Bosco. Following up on Corey, this is looking like a good closeout potentially, but we've said that many times, for many rounds before, and it not happened. Track is going to come out onto the pulse of Hicks though, so a little more pressure on him. Air jabs still getting set up, one left to go. Claymore's also getting placed, and one in Rampy's pocket as well. So a lot of roam control coming out. Chala also following up here. It is a 5v2, barely any damage done to Bosco, and a little teensy bit to Chala. Hicks taking a little bit of damage in the crossing there, down to about 80 aces, and Hicks left alone now to try and survive this 2v5. Hicks has got, or aces has gone topside to try and clear out the room upstairs, and he's the last one remaining, turning the corner almost to his demise, and Bosco will lock it up. It's a flawless round to put the Vodafone Giants, the newly acquired team, down to the loser's bracket off rip. We have liftoff. Houston, it's Space Station to meet up against Evil Geniuses tomorrow. I'm just glad Rampy came alive and got his two kills then.